Hey there guys, uh, it's DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. We're over on Slope's Cast tonight, which is uh, pretty exciting stuff. Pretty exciting stuff. Oh yes, we've got um, quite a few people joining us tonight. I normally like try to invite about five people. Uh, I didn't hear back from a few people and then suddenly everyone got back to me. So we've got quite a few people in here tonight, but that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Let's quickly shoot down who we've got here, and then we'll go through all of the topics we're going to be chatting about tonight on Slopes Cast. And before we go ahead, actually, a massive shout out to everybody that may be listening in the future when this does go up over on Spotify and now Google services as well. The podcast is slowly spreading out. We've only got one more uh, barrier to, to, to cross before we start finding ourselves on the uh, Apple services as well. Um, so that's exciting, very exciting, I've only done two of these, that's pretty good, pretty good. Um, so yes, let's have a look through who we've got here. We have uh, the guy from, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up my little, how do I do this? Andrew, the Banhammer extraordinaire. Hello everybody. Hello, yes, we have Mike Towns, our a regular, joining us again. What up? Hey, hey. We have a future hardcore collaborator on the Complete History series, Mr. Novabug. How you doing, everyone? Yes, yes. Uh, we've got a big, big video coming up, me and Novabug. Hopefully this weekend we will see. I've got a lot to work on with that. And if anyone wants to uh, uh, check out some awesome uh, Amstrad-related stuff, definitely go check out Novabug. Go to Google, type that word in, and subscribe. We've also got uh, Paul Float G, hardcore uh, uh, supporter of the show for a very, very long time. Good evening there. Hey, hey, hey. We also have Smash JT from the States, first American on the show. How you doing, buddy? Howdy. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Howdy. Howdy. That's good. Um, I, I, I'm picturing like uh, you dressed up like Woody the Cowboy right now and you're doing your Howdy, exactly. doing a little bit of a spin of a... <laughs> a ten gallon, my 10 gallon hat. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, we've also got the, the incredible music extraordinaire, Mr. Gaming Muso. Hi. Hey, 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 yes. Um, excellent. So um, this is obviously, like I say, going to be going up on podcast services around the world. Uh, so thank you all for listening in. And let's get straight into our first topic. And uh, let's have a ganders. Let's have a ganders. Uh, moving screen, moving screen. This will all be edited out when I go over to this part. I can't remember what screen I go to. By the way, Dan, Paul Float is American. <laughs> I, I can't remember what the screen <laughs> is. <laughs> it's this screen. It's this. No, it's not this screen. It's no, was, this screen. Was... Here we go. Hey, right, Yay. guys. That Moving over. To... So go on, go on. That was really slick. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you got. You just like you got to extend all your words when you're trying to to postpone. You're like, and we're looking for what I need to do. Sometimes I just start a sentence. And I don't even know how it's going to end. Michael Scott. Okay, there right. is the enemy. Get the transitions yeah. right, Dan. There's a bag of chips in it for you. Huh? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Se sentences also end with the full stop normally. So. Normally, normally. I, I normally add my middle, my my capital letters right in the middle of a sentence. I just get really loud every so often um, and grunty. Right. Okay. Let's edit from here. <laughs> Timestamp for myself. Wait. So for our first topic, we're going to be chatting about. Cotton, the series that's been going on since 1991, the shoot 'em up or cute 'em up, I suppose you could put it. It's got seven proper titles in the series, and it's coming back. Have we got any uh, Cotton fans in the house? I really like Cotton on the Sharp X68000. Do you remember when we did the Man Cave video? I was yes. in yes, where we had uh, Gary Pinkett's amazing Mint X68000. We were oh. playing Cotton on that. And Super it's jealous. absolutely gorgeous game. Absolutely gorgeous game. Really playable, fun. Yeah, I like the original. I've not played the sequel so much, but mm -hmm. really, like really like the original. Any anyone else in here? Uh, um, what about uh, yourself, Smash JT? You got any, you got much love for Cotton? I have actually never played it. I'm just looking up right now on my computer to to check it out, and it looks pretty awesome. Do you? <laughs> On this podcast, are you sharing stuff with us to see, or is it blank? Because I'm not seeing anything on my phone. Okay, I can uh, share that with you right now. <laughs> no, 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 you don't have to. I just want no, to make no, sure I'm, I'm just watching anything. from the YouTube live stream. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I'll just do that then. There you no, go. You can also watch, you can watch it live on here now. Voice, but there yeah. you go. Okay. 
You'll be cool, you'll be cool, able to see you. there. So basically, yes. Uh, but um, no, as, as far as cotton goes, no, I've, I've never seen it, but I am definitely interested in it. Yeah, so uh, Cotton is a cute em up. Like I say, it started its life in 1991. Uh, as Andrew said, that first title uh, did make its way onto the Sharp X68000. And from what I understand, I'm not any kind of expert on the Cotton series. I've not done a complete history on it or anything like that. But from what I understand, the Sharp X68000 version is the version uh, you want to be playing of that original game. And that is the version that they are basing this new remake on. So... That's a good thing. Well, that makes me excited then. Yes, absolutely. In in games are the people responsible for this uh, uh, Western release of the game. Uh, they're the people bringing it uh, over here. They're the people that did the or are doing the Space Invaders uh, collection or Space Invaders Forever. Actually, I think they're the ones doing that. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's exciting. I, I love collecting uh, shmups or cute mups, whatever you want to call them, whatever subgenre it is. Uh, for the my Switch is really Nintendo good Switch. for shmups too. Oh, it's so, so good. I mean, this is more of a left-to-right uh, shoot em up or cute em up I believe. Uh, I don't know if it does go into a vertical. Um, I think on certain levels it does. Or in tape mode, as they call it, or tape yeah. mode. Or, yeah. I don't really know how to pronounce that. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited um, for it. Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton. Exciting. Panorama Cotton was one that I played uh, as a kid on the Mega Drive. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you own that on import by chance? Yes, I did. Yes, really? I did. You know, it's one of the most uh, rarest games. Well, rarest. One of the most expensive games now to get on the Mega Drive, especially. Yeah, and I don't have it up. anymore. <laughs> oh. Go on um, any of those Yahoo auction sites or anything like that, and uh, yeah, check out the um, uh, if you can find the, the the version that comes with the cup. A little, just a little white cup. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's worth silly money. It was a good game. I remember being blown away by the graphics of it because obviously it was very, like they did the scaling really well on that game. Yeah, it was very, very well done. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, like I say, Indian games are the people bringing it over, and it's it's nothing but a good thing in my eyes. Uh, that's coming out next year apparently for the PlayStation Four as well and Steam as well. So mm. that's good for uh, it. I'm the Mega is really good with like cartoon looking games too. Yeah, we've already got someone in the chat who says they're going to be buying it on Steam. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Amasif, yes, supporter of the show. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, definitely worth getting uh, and definitely worth keeping an eye out for. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I don't know what the later games look like in the series so far, but I'm hoping they keep it um, pixelated, uh, as in pixel graphics. I, like a retro look. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of when they grab a series and just make it like very low poly 3D. And that it's like the high res the sprites. Yeah, that's it's what nice. I see. So it's nice to have, mm. It's nice to have a, like a, a quite a you know it's like more like a hidden shoot 'em up is cotton. I mean, I've I've only ever seen the first game myself, mm. um, but it's not. It's, it's, it's I always like them kind of anime based kind of cute 'em ups. You know, the gun birds of this oh, world. Oh yes. And in this, I always think cotton reminded me of Death Smiles quite a bit. Um, and I think Death Smiles is another game that should be sort of like looked at again. It's uh, one of Cave's rare side-on shoot 'em ups. So okay, I have to look that one up. Yeah. I don't know much about that, so that's cool. Excellent. And anyone, anyone know about Death Smiles? I, I kind of like that one. I, I don't know Death Smiles. Anyone yeah. here know Death Smiles? I, I generally don't. It's it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Cave shooter, so it's um, and because because Cave are more famous for their bullet hell verticals, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but this is one of theirs that is uh, side-on. And um, it has that kind of anime art style, but in a gothic, you know, that typical sort of vampire oh, cool. hunter, gothic kind of style. Um, so like a dark Toho. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like that. But it's all very like, tongue in cheek. It's a bit like, um, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit like a super, de you, you know, like kind of super deformed stuff that you get with, uh, you remember Splat House on the Famicom? Kind of that. Yeah, like, that was yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's super deformed that like the where where Spat House came from. It's a bit like that. It's, it's got that kind of connotations to it, but it's really sort of fast paced and it has a typical sort of cave tropes with all the score blasts going everywhere and the multipliers and everything going on. But it's um, nice. it's um, this the, the, is, it, this cotton sort of reminds me of that in a in a sort of more simplified manner. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, nothing but good all around. And um, I'm happy that uh, we're yet again getting more retro games uh, revived. And uh, the Cotton series is one that 
people seem to love. It's a game that always shoots up in price if you're trying to get it uh, retrospectively, especially on the <laughs> Sharp X68000 and that Mega Drive release. Uh, so, thumbs up all round, I say. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Um, we might be going through these quite quickly then at this rate. But uh, moving over to uh, topic number two, <laughs> Atari Mini Pong Jr. is uh, coming out. They've added the Mini and the Jr. there. So for what, for people that don't know, uh, basically, the, the only way I can really describe this is the fact that it's kind of like having a Nintendo Switch on its side with two dolls, but that can only play one yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it, Atari, it, really? Wow! I, I, I like, I'm, I'm, I'm scratching yeah. my head a little bit of this, to be honest. I'm, I'm scratching your head as well. I just, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't get, yeah, I no, I, I, yeah. I'm in the other, I'm in the other camp where I'm actually looking forward to this thing. I, mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. Like if what, like, I would, what I would say really is, guys. Cute. If if those of us like myself and Nova, maybe Muso and Danu, are maybe a little bit older than some of you guys, uh, amongst us, <laughs> well, <laughs> over, the, over I'll 30, I think pretty much most people in here okay, are of age. Of age. Of age. Who, yeah. who grew up with the, when a lot of these Pong machines were sort of uh, even old when we grew up? Who I mean, honestly, I, I actually didn't. I didn't. But who no. gives a toss about this thing? I had yeah, a, 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 a bit, yeah. binatone. I had a binatone. For God's yeah. sake, and 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 you know, even that could do five games. So, <laughs> yeah, well, this has got five, ten modes five, in it, okay. guys. This has got ten modes in it. I mean, um, in one so player the, mode, so that's the way hit ten modes in way, one player, one one player mode, well, two player mode. Well, look, look, everybody in here, everybody in here is quite uh, uh, anti this by the sounds of it. But Smash JT, I'm not. Go for I, it, mate. I, what I what do you want to say? Give me, yeah, give me, give me this. Uh, this is gonna be perfect for like. Uh, once once this whole situation that we're living in is over, when we go back to the office and we can have this on our desk and play with some coworkers, just it's a unique talking piece. It's a coffee table item, and it's it looks like it's fun. Now I did research on the company that's making this. Mm -hmm. It's the same company that made like the gigantic ones that are yes, the same the, thing. The, the kickstarted and, ones, yeah, and they're super high quality. And people want more out of it. It's like, well, don't buy this if you want more out of it. This is a Pong machine. You don't buy a tennis racket to play basketball. So it's like, this is this is a Pong machine. You buy it to play Pong on it. And for on the go, I think it's I think it's really fun and unique. If they get it to, um, I mean, I don't know what this would be in, in American dollars, but it's about 50 pounds, I think yeah. it's kind of reasonable. And what I will say, Smash, um, uh, f f going for what you're saying, I have played on one of those 1,000 odd pound uh, coffee table uh, machines, and I was genuinely blown away by how it's good it's amazing. It's beautiful. But like, I've heard a friend of mine got one, but it was a nightmare that. getting it over. Oh, really? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, they, was it uh, back on the Kickstarter? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. It took, like, months and months. He had to, like, argue with the creators and stuff. Wow, okay. Yeah, I, I saw that it was, um, I think, the expected date. Let me have a look. I have got the Kickstarter open, actually. I can show what that table looked like. Um, and, like, a, you have to reset the pieces and stuff every now and then. Oh, do you really? Yeah, I, it's obviously done by magnets, isn't it? That's the idea. Forgive, yeah. me if I'm, forgive me if I'm wrong, but the display of this thing, it just looks like the surface of an Android samsung or something uh, potentially yeah it just looks like yeah. that so yeah well okay. it probably is running on like a some sort of 4k pong yeah. raspberry yeah. pi or something isn't it yeah. so it'll just, probably be just, hackable or even just a basic snapdragon or something yeah yeah, oh, yeah, yeah there's yeah. no processing power in this thing but it's the the, the problem is you can run pong on literally Anything. Anything. Yeah, I bet I could pick anything. up any tablet and download a hundred. <laughs> no, you can run it, but you, you can run it, but it it it's with the controllers, I, which is what is a selling point. Okay, like, the an analog controllers, yeah. The knobs, yeah, like the that's knob. what I'm looking for. Okay, to. they bought like a they bought like a similar one out, played like the '80s yeah. or something. That I've played before that was really cool, where they sort of de uh, detach with a wire. Yeah, now he's made a good point there. Let's talk knobs, right? So the <laughs> No, seriously. <laughs> um, we're talking about twiddling the knobs, and you, the, the analog <laughs> controllers. I don't think that's. I that. guess that will be a selling point. I understand that. Yeah. Because you will have that 
old school tactile feedback, mm -hmm. you know, that you get from the original Pong arcade. Um, well, probably even more so than the, the original Pong arcade. But at the end of the day, and no offense to probably one of the greatest Genesis video games ever, it's it still, really is, yeah, yeah. It's still <laughs> just Pong. Yeah. That's yeah, all, it, all it is. It's all it ever will be. So it, I like the idea, but I think it should have, it, like you say, it could be hacked quite easily. I get that. Yeah. Why don't they just make it natively with options mm. to have more simple classic games well, on it? The thing is, if it's got the twin knobs, why not put a game like Blasteroids on there? Yeah, a bit yeah. Of Breakout on there. I think that, like, Breakout, something with, like, yeah. really cool effects and stuff like I that. I mean, to be fair, I suppose Breakout, a, a kind of Breakout could go on there already. Um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's one of those things that's like... They should put an etch sketch on it. Honestly, it's going to come I'll, down. I'll it's going to come down to the. It's going to come down to the price. Uh, like it really it, will, yeah. I, it, it, if it's going to be outrageous, like you said, what you say, fifty but uh, fifty pounds, which yeah. is you know what, which is sixty five dollars here. I, I was going to say yeah. if it's a hundred. As a fun, I'd say if it's. Sorry, I'd say sorry. if it's a hundred, if, if it's under a hundred bucks, I, I would, I would think about it, but that's still pretty high. So like even if I buy it, it's going to go on the shelf. I think. As a as yeah, a fun, yeah. I would say as a fun gift, I wouldn't pay more than thirty five quid for this. Yeah. As a fun gift, and that so would that, be that it. yeah, you're talking around fifty dollars there. Um, yeah, I yeah, about about fifty bucks. Yeah. But I forty nine ninety nine. There's that, a sweet spot. You compare it to a video game. I mean, it's going to be it's hardware. So yeah, that's a true. Disc yeah. is the same price. So it's all. I relative. think it's like aesthetics. It's, it's, Exactly, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the aesthetics. You're paying for the nostalgia value of it. Exactly. You're, 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 mm -hmm. you're, not exactly. Paying, you're not paying for the tech in it. Honestly, the tech is like probably nostalgia worth Nostalgia nerds never pay yeah. heat yeah. for anything. You know, the you're, not, you're, not, you're not paying yeah. for Pong. <laughs> you know, the, the, the tech in this has probably got less tech than one of my speakers that I'm looking at right now. You know, it's, it's, it honestly what, has. Well, what I would company, say, guys, is... The company that's making it is a high-quality company, so I don't think... I'm not saying it's not high-quality. And, and also, like we said, that that Unis, I think they called it Unis Technology, the uh, or Unis Technology, the um, anus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's very simple tech. You know, oh, it's very it's, simple, but, it's but what I would more... sorry, you can't. sorry, correct. Well, I was going to say what I would say is I'm looking at some extra info on it here, and I would say the company have been incredibly cheap here. If you look in the video, Dan's been playing the saying about it's rechargeable. Yeah. It doesn't come with rechargeable batteries. You have to put your own rechargeable batteries in. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Want... <laughs> really? Oh, no. Seriously. You do have to put three AA is... rechargeables in it. It's got That's extra correct. charger what? batteries not included. What okay. are, you talking... are, you, are, you, are you talking about the Pong machine? Yeah. yeah. No, that's got a lithium-ion battery in it. Oh, There's a photo of lithium-ion. Photos of it here. It says in the trailer... It, it doesn't say what I'm trailer. looking at. Three double A's. Three rechargeable uh, double A's. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's 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 up on the screen. The uh, mini so, Game Gears, so, you could use batteries or use the or, charge inside of it. Or is it saying there's an optional lithium-ion battery for it? Right there. Uh, lithium rechargeable battery. You, you just you just saw it on the or is it there. saying Or is it saying it can recharge lithium batteries inside it? That's a bit ambi See, ambiguous in that there. Yeah, because those photos... That is I've... so weird. That is that. ambiguous. Yeah. Li Last time I checked, now I want one. Don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> how? I mean, yeah. How do they say it's got a lithium-ion battery, and then it shows? Yeah, no, no, saying no. I mean, they come, the ones that do they not come with it though? Are they like those ones, those lithium-ion batteries that you actually get with it, and they've just put them in there? I doubt yeah. that. It's saying users can optionally install three lithium batteries. Ah. For yeah, because oh, otherwise wait. it just takes three double A's. Yeah. So you have to like leave it plugged in. Or... There you go. So that's a bit of fraudulent advertising. I mean, it takes at least it takes one less battery than a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that is and fifteen that is less than a game yes, gear. Though. Yeah, <laughs> and two hundred games less. They, they, Same but size that's the false advertising because in the trailer it says lithium ion battery, and then when you look at this, it says op users can optionally install it. Well, it's like yeah, anything's lithium ion if that's the way you go about it. I think what I think yeah. what they're my, trying to say is boy, my Game yeah. Boy is lithium ion. Yeah, yeah. I think what they're trying <laughs> to say is it's a shape. <laughs> It, the, the charger that's built into it is capable of charging lithium-ion batteries. Right. Mm, that is weird. Yeah, still a bit flimsy. Yeah. Still a little sketch. 
Yeah, so you true. tell me this is this this is not just a pong machine, but it also doubles as a battery charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what you can use it for. You can yeah, use battery. it to charge uh, the eight million batteries that you need for your Sega Nomad. That's yeah. what you can use it for. That's, that's it. No. What you do is you buy two and you use one to charge the batteries for the other one. You take two out and put them in five hours charging to play the Nomad for ten minutes. (laughs) Ask me how I know. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) So the speaker essentially what we've got here is on the bottom, by the way, which is kind of weird too. But you could play. I would say. um, Sorry, go. It's bigger than it looks as well, according to the dimensions. It's actually 30 centimetres long. So it's That's not... Awesome. Wow. A standard not... school ruler. Standard school ruler. I play test Pong. I mean, that's what, that's 12 inches or a foot in old school, isn't it? So, but I mean, that's not, that doesn't make it very sort of portable, does it, at that size? Mm. No. It's, it's strange. It's, um... Because because like that 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 table that I'm playing the video of the 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 table they've done it was it, it you, know, you have to see it to believe it because it's it's so weird how it works and it's really really nice um, th- that it's like, like it's like the, an alien thing yeah it's like the ultimate um, uh, like more <sighs> see but it's if like I an had, uncanny like, valiness to it yeah if I, I've got, I've got a game room and I want to put in there a proper arcade machine you know like. This would be cool in, in, in almost like a meeting room that you know, like the meeting room, or because uh, uh, it those can only really do what twenty seven. Those are twenty seven hundred pounds for you. Mm. Yeah. Jesus, you see the big thing, the big one has much more of an appeal because it's it's a centerpiece. Yeah. It can act as a centerpiece. It can act yeah. as an attraction. And so if you have, like you say, you have slopes, you have a game room, it acts as an attraction. Now, this is the classic pong in presented in this form. It has more of a more of an aura about it but mm-hmm. a little a little ruler sized <laughs> tablet block <laughs> with a couple of fancy knobs on it on your on your table which you know has got more charging capacity than the, you know you know your latest Atachi drill and it can charge yeah, I, I, I yeah i i don't know I, I i think this is actually quite um uh, it would look really it, cool on a rabbit hutch i think to be honest, let's, let's summarize it like this it's for the gang who go hey guys who remembers that Atari? Do you remember Pong? Yeah. Ooh, uh, some anybody Pong remember yet? Atari Pong? I, I yeah. remember. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I, remember. I think it's quite. I, I think it's quite. Um, I wouldn't say sinister, but it's certainly capitalising on. I think it's modern Atari being like, "Hey, how can we make money?" Pong. Yeah, that, I, people I, I know can, that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, we're Atari. Do you remember what we used to do? Hey, yeah. hey, is yeah. is but gather around, kids. Let's all play Pong. Everybody what remember Pong. We have a console oh. coming out soon. No, forget about that. It's, it's quite yeah, cynical. It's, it's quite cynical, really, isn't it? It's quite. Well, cynical. I mean, yeah, the, the, I there's so many like. So many people have their their, their hands in the, in the Atari Pie now. It's just like this, this company are probably quite a legitimate company. And I mean, with the table, I mean, like I say, the table is fucking good, like really good. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, 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 you, I mean, you looked into them, Smash. Did you see if they'd done anything else, like any home stuff like this before? As in, as yeah, small they, like this Smash, like this um, this little mini Atari thing. Yeah, they well, not the home stuff. No, that's as far as I could tell. They are known for like the the arcades that you throw the balls at the clowns and yeah, the really extravagant ball ball and yeah, and yeah, the motorcycles that you ride on. Like they do all carnival. the big stuff. Car- so this, yeah, carnival, carnival, games, carnival yeah. stuff, carnival games. The, the, the sort of stuff that's, yeah, you know, quite impressive for the two minutes that you play it. And I suppose now they're just keeping up with that trend and releasing Pong machines. Like, I, yeah. I, I just feel like I, I wish this had more on it. Because, I mean, it, it looks quite nice, the little mini Pong machine. But I, mean, I don't know. I just wish... I, I, there's so many games that work with dials, you know. So it, yeah. it's a shame they, they yeah. more. They could, they could have added at least more options with it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what what's next? A handheld... Um, a handheld Magnavox Odyssey 2. You know. <laughs> yes, please. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we might be getting a, uh, an SG-1000 Mini. So, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I heard about that. The cards. So. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too... It's too... There, you, you, you spoke about that in the last uh, Slopes guys, didn't you? The, the mm-hmm. SG-1000 Mini. It's, I think that's way too sort of like focused in Japan, though. It's, it's, it wasn't, didn't have that worldwide expose. Oh, like no, it definitely didn't. Today. It definitely didn't. But so. the, the fact that he said... 
The next one will be released on a worldwide scale because he was going off the back of the Game Gear Micro. Uh, yeah. Whatever top dog at Sega said this. But yeah, after the Game Gear Micro, our next one will be a worldwide one either based on the SG-1000 or the Dreamcast. It's like, you've just completely dropped the two <laughs> ends of the spectrum there. Like, there's Gotta no middle ground. Part. Like, um, you know, a Master System kind of works in the middle. You know, maybe Saturn works in the middle a bit there, you know. Because yeah. um, okay. the no retro me. gamers like it. But yeah, it's in the middle. But Dreamcast and <laughs> SG-1000, like, what? If an SG-1000 Mini gets released, then there is hope for a GX-4000 Mini. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I've learned being being in the game industry, if you can pick it up and wait long enough, it'll eventually exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless go. it's Half Life Three. So uh, moving <laughs> from. <laughs> well, I mean, we technically kind of got Half Life Three, didn't we? Or Half Life Zero, I suppose. I don't know. That's a well, was they got they got Half Life the uh, virtual reality game or whatever. Yeah, yeah Alex. Uh, it's, it is. It is really good too. It is. They did a Bioshock mod for that I was watching recently. That was really cool. <laughs> there you go. Cool. So, yeah, from the Atari Mini Pong Jr., because I have to have Mini and Jr. in the title for some reason. Um, mixed opinions in the crowd. A um, little bit maybe not being as uh, honest as they perhaps should be with these batteries that are inside it, what have you. It, we'll see what happens when it comes out. To me, it seems like a company that don't normally deal in this space jumping in this space and then realizing wow should we really be in this space so <laughs> we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes i suppose they have to because they're not really probably selling too many arcade machines right now so moving from one machine that you know may or may not even get released at this point if you ask me um over to the analog duo so this is yes the next analog system so for people that don't know i own one of the analog systems myself i own the analog uh, mega sg which is a fpga uh, no emulation um mega drive which you know i'm sure the purist and I, I suppose i should be a purist will tell you that it's always best to use original hardware wrong the best mega drive is the analog mega drive it is mm -hmm. about to i think this is going to do very well yes. i think this is going to do very well because the obviously the turbo the turbo duo mm -hmm. um if you've got one these days, they are one system that requires a hell of a lot of capacitors to be replaced. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because they, they were, they, they really cheaped out with them. And, of course, if I remember correctly, the originals only came, well, they didn't come with, like, a RGB or S video or anything like that, did they? It was just composite. Um, was it even I that? So. I, 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 yeah. I don't own one myself, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so this is basically they're going to be making something brand new that will last for a long time that's going to give so many people that even even with the um even with the turbo graphics cd most of the like quang has two turbo graphics cds cool. and both of them don't work oh, so right, okay. it's so when they're making something like this and they're making it out of good parts they're making it to last because analog do i think this is going to go really well for them yeah, I think it's some amazing games on these consoles. Yeah. There's a lot yes, of they callbacks do. There. There's a lot of callbacks in the design as well. It's very Turbo Duo R. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And not to I just, mention, you can't, I, even, you can't even touch a Turbo Duo for the price this is going to sell for. Yep. So. Not even the R version, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. the R. I mean, I, I, think, I think it's great for the people that already have the games and stuff like that, Which, but the people that already have the games typically already have the console that goes along with it and you can get the multi cards and stuff that they just load games onto yeah, you can yeah. you, but if you're gonna do that why wouldn't you just emulate it on your computer well a lot it, of people it, i mean the it, thing is i mean i i own a mega drive i own most models of a mega drive i've got a massive mega drive collection but i still went out and bought the mega sg because i want the very best way yeah. uh, to play yeah. it via hdmi and i think they're the people that the, the hardcore people i my, my favorite generation is a 16-bit generation and i stupidly missed out on the super nt which I'm, I'm sure it's just called the super nt whatever the the super nintendo yeah uh, there's a super was. nt yeah, yeah super nt that's the one i want to get yeah but those are so expensive though about, about 200 like, 250 pounds something like that ouch well, it's not, it were one ninety nine at launch in the U.S., but forget about it. You're not you, you <laughs> found them for almost no time after launch, and now they're hundreds more expensive. Yeah, yeah, now they're five hundred. This, yeah. this is where this yeah. is going. And it gets to. So go ahead. Sorry. No, so, so this is where the, I think this is going to like. I agree with James. This is where this is going to do well because you, it does fill that gap in. I myself, for instance, have a, a, a TG sixteen with a EverCard. 
So you've got all the Hue card games with it. Evercard, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Evercard, mm-hmm. that's what. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. uh, so I've got all the, obviously your access to all the, all, all the, all the Japanese games through the PC Engine mode and everything else. I would snap this up. If you can't yeah. get hold of a Turbo Duo or a CD, like I said, you've got reliability issues with them systems. And then yeah. you, you, play you, you bring that on to like the Core 2 and stuff like that, you've got yeah. even more reliability yeah. issues. I the think... original TG16 was a solidly built machine, as, as was the original PC Engine. And as they get up, they get through the advances, they get a little bit cheaper and a little bit mm-hmm. mm, unreliable. But this is, um, yeah, this is PC Engine fans, this is going to be quality. Yeah, the only thing I will say is, actually cares, which is cool. What is this going to do to the market in countries like the UK, where we didn't have a huge amount of PC Engine here, compared to Japan, where we have very few of the titles here? What is this going to do to the the, the market prices for the cards? And I'm the, assuming the, this the, is cross-platform. The I'm assuming this is cross-platform. It can yeah. take original. Oh yes, well it can. And and the thing about this, <laughs> compared to anything else they've done, like the Mega SG, or I suppose it's only the Mega SG actually. This comparison, but this isn't just a Turbo Graphics 16 or a PC Engine. It also plays Super Graphics, Turbo Graphics CD, PC Engine CD, and oh, Super cool. Arcade wow. CD ROM. So unlike yeah. where you know you'd expect, like it, it's basically as if Analog came out and said, "Here's some crazy Mega SG that also plays Mega CD games and also plays 32X games." Yeah. Um, but it doesn't. It just plays Mega Drive games, but this plays them all. Um, so um, well, well, I say you say you say plays them all. They, they state themselves nearly every NEC yeah, system, yeah. Mm-hmm. nearly. So, but again, it probably what... still plays more than the Poly Mega. Oh uh, yeah, really? In terms of that, because obviously this is FPGA based. So it's. I wonder whether they are trying to compete with that with things like this, <clears throat> um, because obviously analog are known for making very high quality hardware so they've already made a name for themselves with obviously the nt the super nt um the 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 mega drive one that they released so Mm -hmm. they've kind of got a bit of a proven track record for putting out top quality stuff so i wonder whether it was just a run-up to this whether this was like the plan do you know what i mean and then you wonder after this are they then gonna do a neo geo kind of clone or something like that like like that that's the next sort of like hardcore expensive sort of system I imagine they'd go for. Yeah. But like especially when you play really Neo Geo CD. I like it's a really niche crowd. I, I, I must admit I'm I, I do like I do like the uh, the Bluetooth uh, wireless uh, TG sixteen style controllers. They look Very excellent. Nice. Yeah. Um I, lo- I love the fact that you can use old hardware with it. You've got the same DIN out for the controllers and stuff like that. Yeah, it, this is this is tasty. This is a tasty. It's, yeah. it's yeah. nice, um, but for the reason Smash said, I'm not going to pick it up um, because I have one uh, PC mm. Engine game uh, of, of all those different things. I have one. And oh, no, actually, no, I have two. Actually, a fan sent me a, a CD one, uh, which I've emulated on the computer. Um, you get an Evercard that sorts it I, out. Yeah, it? I could. <laughs> I definitely could. Um, but yeah, I've only got Bomberman '93. It's one of those things. I've missed out on the Game Boy one they did, and I missed out on the uh, um, uh, the, the Super Nintendo one. And I feel like those are systems I would want more. And I'm also thinking of the future. Like if I bought this, I don't know how much I would use it. Um, I yeah. really don't know if I would use it much. I use my Mega Drive loads because I'm like an addict to that system. Uh, so that was perfect for me. Um, and I'm thinking to myself. If they start touching the CD-based systems and they end up doing a Sega Saturn one, I think that would probably. I was be their thinking case. that, yeah. Yeah, I would. Like those yeah. things burn out hardcore. Maybe even. there is more of a possibility than doing that now. Obviously, since the Saturn was hacked, because they've been able to obviously reverse engineer everything that was done with that console. Mm-hmm. That something I am noticing is, um, if you scroll down on the page, it says that they're going to provide a, a little special adapter for the pocket. That will oh, allow yeah, you to play yeah, the yeah, yeah. cards on the pocket. Oh, so yeah. that, oh, cool. yeah. yeah. If you didn't have a, a turbo, what, what was the handheld of GT. the? Yeah, the GT. Yeah. GT. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like you, enemy of the state or something like that. Yeah, and they are difficult to get hold of in working condition as well. So they're going to be making it available on the pocket. I wonder whether they're just targeting these because they know that the original systems are now kind of starting to fail and I'll require think. much more effort to kind of sort them yeah. out. Well, what was the other one, the NT? I think that was like a tabletop. Yeah. It's also then that the, the, the Pocket, which is 2021, $29.99. What? Oh, that's, that's insane. Sh- that is insanely cheap. Compared to the Atari. Cheap. 
the, the yeah. pong thing. So there you go. What, what do you want, guys? Do you want? Yeah, a, and that's uh, twenty nine ninety nine US dollars. That's so, what you're talking about. Does anything adapt at isn't it? Just, uh, is it? Yeah, that's coming in twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's probably, probably the adapter. Yeah, because I was going to say the adapter. Yeah, but it's still insane. It's still insane. It's still insane. It's still yeah. insane. Oh I mean, yeah, but I mean that's that's like the the Mega Drive converter to play Master System games is obviously going to be cheaper than buying a Master System, isn't it? You know, like, yeah. slopes. Slopes. That's cheaper than a Switch game. It is. The the, you know, the, the one problem I have, and I don't obviously, you know, that I suppose there's no real way that the um, uh, analog would ever be able to get around this. The thing that put me off and made me hesitate, and when you hesitate for one minute, that was it. The, the pre-orders were gone. But the um, with the with the pocket. You have to spend what is it like two hundred or two hundred fifty pounds for the pocket, and then you need to spend another thirty pounds on top for every single system. So you need to spend another yeah. thirty pound for the Game Gear, thirty pound for the uh, uh, different types of Game Boy mm-hmm. ones, and mm-hmm. all these different systems. And it was, it ended up on a point like, so if I do want to get this pocket with all of the attachments, now I'm starting to get so like real life DLC. Like, yeah, it's crazy money. Um, let me find it. Pocket. I mean, it was. Oh, it looks so nice though. It will um, be a hot item for chiptune composers and the like oh, because yeah, sure. the oh, cables yeah. and stuff that they're providing with it they're even providing like a midi in to it so you could yeah. just run a keyboard straight from it they've really it's thought so about expensive this. nowadays yeah so like a they really game have game they really have thought yeah. about that yeah there we go so it's uh 30 for the game gear 30 for the neo geo pocket color 30 <laughs> for the atari links and then 30 for the game boy uh, for the turbo graphics 16 it's also it's, it's also it's also handy that a certain patent has expired i've noticed because the design of the pocket looks very familiar <laughs> yes <laughs> it's to a certain a little big bit. n <laughs> you can dock that it's got a resolution of 1600 by 1440 so it's a much higher so i wonder how games would look on that because that's a ridiculously high resolution screen such as for a small form that, factor oh, yeah, so they, had, like a, they had a gif on the home page that looked really nice in yeah. the screen aspect ratio is interesting as well yeah so uh going down let's 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 work our way through everybody here andrew uh going back to the actual um the, the, the duo is it something that you would be interested in getting yourself it might it's it's not a system i've always I've really thought about getting into, but I suppose if you, if you, I was on the fence and I wanted to get into the games and mm-hmm. collecting something and not worry about the hardware, it'd be a nice way of starting to build the collection of something new. Sure, and that that's what's turning me off. I I I, I think it's just more the, the budget. I, I it's not not just buying the system. I don't think I've got the time to start another collection. And because mm-hmm. I only own one mm-hmm. PC Engine game, I'm not mm-hmm. there yet to start this PC Engine collection. I'm I'm much more interested in my Mega Drive, my Super Nintendo, and sticking around that era uh I, I, well i suppose this is that era but i don't know if i can jump into here as well yeah i mean the out of all of them that they've made i think the one that does interest me the most has been the mega sg yes. just because obviously growing up with the mega drive yeah. and, and and i just like again i think they make good quality stuff and i think that they are for people that really want to enjoy the best possible gaming experience from the it's old like games you know yeah they're, they're, they're like the uh the, the Apple purists or something like that—the the, the max yeah. of the retro gaming scene, aren't they? <laughs> oh god, yeah. Can you can you imagine if they come out with a, a, a analog Apple Pippin? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to run out of consoles yeah. eventually. Yeah, yeah. Analog Sega Pico. Oh god, yeah. So Mike Towns, you reckon you'll pick one up? Uh, interested because like, uh don't see too much like turbo graphics stuff in australia because there's a little bit of pc engine because close to japan i think but mm-hmm. i've always wanted a turbo graphics so this seems like the easiest way to get it honestly that's that's the thing i remember I, my wife's not into retro gaming or anything at all but i always told her when she, probably in one of the ball conversations she had with me where i said that like i've always wanted to get into the pc engine and one year she said oh, i think i'm gonna get you this pc engine and i was just like you know what don't because I can't be bothered to start collecting for it. Like, and, and you know, that's, that's what it's all about for me. You know? It's like it, it, I've always like been impressed by it because of the era that it's in, like just how amazing it looks compared to everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was it was a, a great system, very underrated, I think. Mhm, mhm, absolutely. And uh, Smash, what you got to say about this? I mean, uh, if I had all the money in the world, of course I'd buy all these, but I don't. I, I, none of us do. But uh, here's the thing, like. I feel like it's being marketed to the purists, the collectors, the people that grew up on 
this and have all the games where mm-hmm. I feel like it would actually be better fit for the people that grew up with it that aren't purists, that don't play games a lot and want to get back into collecting and be like, oh, there's a new one out that like the plays old, like, everything perfect fanboy. on my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, like, like, uh, so I'm saying, it's, it's, you already have a collection. You don't want to start a new thing. You already have. So, like, I'm looking over. I'm in my game room right now. I have all the consoles all plugged in, all lined up. And I'm like, I don't even have room for another one of these things <laughs> to put in. So that's where I'm at. With it. Yeah. Well, I mean, now that they've got the name, now this thing's going to set up, regardless of who in this chat's going to buy one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what oh, about yeah. you, Mike Town? Oh no, sorry, um, uh, Paul Float. What are you, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a original uh, TG16 and the booster. Um, oh, I never nice. got into the CD part. So, in all honesty, I probably will pick one up if for no reason other than to have it go up in value a little bit and then try and trade it for a Super NT. Because that's what I actually want. That is actually what I want as well. That's a, that's a good... Uh... Hmm. So, uh... <laughs> but doesn't this company not to not to jump in? But doesn't this company like sometimes go back to reproducing the older ones again for a second yeah, run? Yeah, very like that. rarely. And what but I don't understand that kind of demand like, for the you super NT. You got reflexes than buying an RTX 30 series to get your hands on one. I feel like again, I feel like if you wait long enough, they'll they'll make another run and make another run. If they're making money hand over fist, why would they? Why would? they limit it to a ridiculously low amount like they've been doing, you know? Uh, what I yeah, don't I understand would, I would, is... Because honestly, they're not making money off the... I mean, it's the same argument with, you know... Like Just the, raise the price then, because people will pay they're, it. They're not making money on the eBay market. You know, they could... They could not only they could they need to raise the price the value, then. You know, yeah, well, even if they didn't, you know, increase the price, they could deflate it from 500 US back down to its original price... And actually make that money themselves instead of it just being, you know, resellers. That's what I'm saying. You're yeah. saying they're not making that eBay money. I'm saying they're selling it for too cheap. If they're selling out that fast, it doesn't make very good business sense from them as a company to be selling them for as cheap as they are if they're as popular as they are. And as limited as they are. It's a tough line. Raise to, the price. To... Yeah, I mean, it's that, that's a tightrope right there that you know to walk. I mean, one ninety nine is honestly a decent price. I mean, really you know, it's the main thing is just that you know it sold out so quick because, um, especially around the time it came out, you know, they were taking advantage of the big spike in retro streaming on Twitch. You know, something that I do myself, mm. but I'm using original hardware, you know, upscaled because I wasn't able to get a Super NT. You know, so. It just, you know, suddenly a lot of people wanted them, and unfortunately, some people bought them solely because they knew they'd go up in price, like the uh, Nintendo one. I forget what that was actually called. Um, the game and the NT. Know, yeah, no, no, the, the yeah. original yeah. NES one. Yeah, the the yeah. NT oh, yeah. analog NT. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People people bought this one for the sole reason of they know it's going to go up in value, and they want to be able to gouge people on it, and. You know, that's unfortunate, but, you know, I mean, at the same time, it's a Nintendo-based system, and, well, that's just, you know, what happens, apparently. What I don't understand is how is the uh, Duo, uh, $200 system, Mega SGs, $200, I, 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 probably the NT, the Super NT was 200 I don't know, I can't remember, but but the... Uh, the the NES one, which I would assume would be the easiest one to make, was five hundred. First that product, that one, so much more licensed product, and I want yeah. Mm-hmm. But then they re-released it uh, as in a second print one, and it was still so expensive. It was the price, same price. It was yeah. I Nintendo mean, demand a pound of flesh, don't they? Yes, yeah, exactly. I was about <laughs> to say that. Yeah, big. I mean, they even released a solid it. gold one for crying out loud. You they know, it's. Did, yeah. I mean, have they got a license from Nintendo to do it? Yes, probably. So, you know, you yeah. know what Nintendo are like. Nintendo will have said, you must pay us yeah. money for every... You, you, will you, cut off your, you will cut off your arm and give me it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they didn't do it for the Super NT. I can't imagine Nintendo got any money out of this. Oh, there's God, million, mate, they, they, they would have to get money out of this because otherwise, cause yeah, otherwise that's Nintendo that's don't true. do it. They are, they the are big hatch, actually. Than because the toys. It's 
you're reverse engineering original hardware after the patent expires. So once the patent's expired on the Nintendo or the Famicom, you know, there's nothing Nintendo could do about it. You know, they w- they will always still try. That's no, just... I, I reckon they paid Nintendo anything. You reckon? I mean, I mean if you like. tell me otherwise, show me proof, or whatever. I don't think that's the case. Like, but are, are they there's, doing there's something with a the million game Famiclone like? consoles out there? I mean, that, that's where the term comes from, Famiclones. Like, no way did like have all of these people paid Nintendo um, mm. money to release some. Shit yeah, but a lot, a lot of the ones from China aren't because they've cloned the chips. They've cloned yes. like the protection chips and things. But if these guys have been really said dendy. <clears throat> yeah, but if these guys have been legit about it, maybe they have gone to Nintendo and said, "Look, we want to license yeah, the protection yeah. chips for the games, especially for the for the original hardware interface." Yeah, so I mean, hey, if that's happened, master. that's fair play. But I'd be really surprised. But yeah, because a lot of their Chinese stuff is is like illegal anyway. So oh, yeah, yeah. No, I get that, but, yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah, well, that's stuff that's very shadily put onto the internet, isn't it? So, so it's not... I mean, these guys really did want to go legit with their company, so mm. maybe they did approach that, Nintendo. Yeah. It gives them a more approachable aspect as well, going legit like that. People would trust Less them. broken legs. Mm. There you I'll, go. Be get, I'll be get one, by the way. Flip I'm going to take right my right thumbs. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Okay, well, there you go. Uh... It's an exciting system. Um, for me, it's more. I'm more excited about them pumping out more of the uh, the Super Nin- NT or Super Nintendo, whatever that version is, uh, and seeing what comes in the future. Because I'm really excited about what this company make when they start moving into the CD world, uh, which they've just started dipping their toes in with this. So it's exciting for the future. Get get me a Saturn and a Dreamcast, and then uh, uh, yeah, then then we're Satcast. That's probably it's probably going to be the next hardware console I actually buy. This, funnily enough. Mm. Well, um, it, it's a bad time for me as well. I've just dropped money for a uh, PlayStation Five. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in, yeah, not interested in that. Not interested in the takes up the room X. six of these. <laughs> yeah, um, got two switches. So yeah, um, this is probably a, a, an avenue I want to go down because I do want to follow my PC engine stuff more. Mm. And the the little TG sixteen I got, it's not enough. I need more. And uh, this one's good unless I can get my hands on a genuine um, Duo R. <laughs> well yeah then you will be dropping some serious money exactly there we go so moving into topic number three uh we're gonna be chatting about sega's 60th anniversary uh so i don't know if anybody here has been uh following what sega have been doing um you know with all of their flashy promotions showing off their history <clears throat> sonic um, was free i think sonic 2 yeah sonic 2 was free yeah that one of the the, the company's most probably the best game they ever made one of uh given away for free um i mean it's always been practically free isn't it <laughs> let's be honest but uh second yeah. crazy taxi oh crazy taxi so good so good but on top of that they also gave away oh, fantasy four... star 2 fantasy star 2 i mean yeah i i, I fantasy <laughs> star i don't really know much about other one it's like it's the one it's one of the few uh sega properties that have just like completely over me it's, it's an rpg you know uh, it's awesome. Take my word for it. I know. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Everyone says it is. Everyone says it is. So um, yeah, they've given away four free games, and they've done it in, in a in a sort of limited time frame. So you only had like I think it was like five days or something to get these four games. Um, I don't know if people in here have played them. The one I was probably most excited about was the Streets of Camero Show. I think yep. I'm saying that right. The um, a, a mix up between Streets of Rage Two, Streets of Rage Two style with Yakuza. Um, Ooh absolutely came out of nowhere um I... love streets of rage 2 oh yeah it's great it's great it's like a a, a one level deal but <laughs> you play it over and over again and the objective is basically just to get the highest score you possibly can yes reminds me of stuff like capcom was doing with mega man when they released yeah. like the crossover games yeah yeah it's fun it, it really is it is fun. Um, so, uh, Empty Clip are the people that uh, actually created this. Um, it, it, like you say, it's just you know one very basic level set around the style of Streets of Rage 2. I was actually surprised when I pressed play on this. I genuinely thought it was just going to be Streets of Rage 2, but they sprite swapped the characters. But no, this is like literally been, dare I say it, built from the ground up, but maybe. Uh, I mean, it's... Mm-hmm. It's like uh, an indie game. Yeah, I mean they they yeah. they've completely redone the, the levels, but they've done it in a um, they've done it in the same layout, but just you know with the the, the Yakuza art style in a pixel uh, fashion. It's there's definitely things that aren't quite right. Like for instance, uh, when you when you uh, 
beat down a guy with a massive sword. He drops it and it turns into a cone. <laughs> so I noticed that just there. Yeah. yeah, there's a few things that go wrong there. Um, you know, it, it's very, I wouldn't say very glitchy, but it's it's definitely not completely polished. Um, but, I mean, you know, who are we to complain? It's a free Streets of Rage, almost like a mod, that Sega have actually put out themselves. So mm-hmm. it's it's quite exciting. Um it's brilliant for what it is. You play it for about an hour, and as you said, you, you, it's the same one level over and over and over again. Each time they add a few more enemies, uh, and they, they, I, th- I, I think I, I, from what I played it, I've only played it through once, uh, several <coughs> times. I got to think to round four. Um, they, they, I think they get faster as well. Um, so it's like yeah, a wave and the difficulty of... rating is upped quite a bit on each yeah. run, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's 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 good because if you if it, it does get people chasing those high scores. Which yeah. is a rare thing these days, obviously. Mm-hmm. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I feel like took like old school like new grounds. So it's gone. Go ahead. Uh, when um, companies do this kind of stuff, reminds me like the old school days of new grounds and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's exciting. It's exciting. Um, uh, do we this, think we're going to be seeing more? Of this is this going to become a game? game? No. Can I- Smash JT. Oh. You're breaking up there, buddy. In. Hey, like, this game... Rem- Sounds like he's got Verizon. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no. Going through a tunnel. <clears throat> so, uh, Smash JT, you broke up like, for the whole... For everything am I, am I back there, now? You're back now. You're back. Mate. Okay, I, I shut off my Wi-Fi. It's, it's going whack right now. Um... <laughs> So, as far as this game, it reminded me of, like, back when the Amiibos first came out on Nintendo, and I thought that you'd be able to, like, swap characters into retro games when you swapped them in, and I'm like, nope, they're not actually doing that. But it's like, that is such an incredible opportunity to explore for these companies, even if they have to build them from the ground up, like Nintendo's doing with Super Mario 35th Online, that was apparently built from the ground up, even though people think it's just the ROM. Um, but if they're able to start swapping characters and swapping in and out of the worlds and maybe even doing more than just a palette swap, but like background so like quantum and stuff. Leap. Yeah. Like if you can put like Simon Belmont in the original Mario brothers or Mega Man or like all that kind of stuff, or even crossbreed with Sonic the Hedgehog now that they, but the kind of stuff they were doing other. with like Mario maker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah oh, like so I mean, for the I, I 60th, though, I would have... If, if if this is what they're giving us for the 60th, why have we not got some real legacy characters swapped into this game? Why have we like not got... I, 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 I don't know. I, I quite like what they're doing, because the thing is, I, I do look at Sega as, as in their commu- consumer side, because obviously there's a thousand different areas yeah. of Sega with their arcade and what have you. But I, I, I do like to... I do see Sega as, Sega as two different companies now. Like you got the retro style with all of their legacy stuff, like you say, with Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, all that sort of thing, and Outruns and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but then you have their newer stuff with Yakuza, and that's so so different. And their uh, the, what's the hospital game, Two Point Hospital, and all, all this sort of stuff that they put out. And I, I do quite like the fact that they've just merged those two for a quick, fun little game and added Yakuza into a Streets of Rage game. I think that's that that I think that's quite a clever move. Yeah, um, two, if they two sides of the timeline. Of, yeah, I can imagine like Fist of the North Star um, working in like Golden uh-huh. Axe or something. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I mean, so obviously, what? it took time for them to do it, and then they've still made it free, haven't they? So it's that's one of those things. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great absolutely. that they've made it free. It's cool. I, I would, I'd like them to do more. I, if they did more, I'd want to see this crazily polished. Because if I'm going to be brutally honest, if this was a um, just a, a little mod that I'd just downloaded that someone had made, I probably wouldn't have given it as much time as I did. You know? mm. um, but the fact that Sega put this out themselves, I'm like, you know, this is actually really cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's cool. That was the first one. The second one they did was Endless Zone. Um, so that was, uh, I'll move over for you. So Endless Zone is technically an update Fantasy version zone? of Fantasy Zone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, and it's difficult as fuck. It's difficult as fuck, believe me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were streaming uh, it. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, Endless Zone is a... I mean, not Endless Zone, sorry. The Fantasy Zone series is actually quite a tricky series uh, until you get properly used to it. Um, adore that series. I've done a complete history on that series. Oh, yeah. look at those backgrounds. Um, I mean, this one's quite nice. I mean, it wasn't... It's was probably my second favourite like as, as a full game that they did, um, just gameplay-wise. But, um, 
And this was uh, actually done by one of the uh, UK studios, from what I understand, as well. So mm-hmm. that's quite nice. And, and then getting hold of one of the uh, legacy properties and playing around with it, that's, that's a cool thing. Yeah, but, a, lot um, of, a lot of look at this, a lot of look at this one. Yeah. 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 As, as, as many people here played um, much of Endless Zone. Got much to played say about Endless Zone. Zone. <laughs> Never played it. No, me, me neither, but I will. <laughs> yeah, I have. And it's, um, it, it again, fun. You know, is this, it, it's, is this just, it's just Steam. Is this on yes. Steam? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. anymore. You can't get it. No not anymore. Yeah, now. Had that Unfortunately, like four or five days, and that's it. It's gone now. Yeah. Ah. So, so you're pulling like the Nintendo, but just over five days. Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Um, that they're doing it, but the, the, these aren't full games. They're like tiny little, almost like tech demos, almost. Um, yeah, micro games. Yeah. Yeah. Min- they even they even said they're mini games, basically free mini games. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. It, it's, it's strange. That, they'd only put it out for five days not like the year but I, I don't know it's strange but yeah still it, uh, it's a thing you can't get it at, you can't get it at all pump up the resale yeah. value it's gone now it is ah. gone ah, um, it looks good I like that I like the, I like the sort of like uh, the, the fusion of uh, like you say fantasy zone and uh, almost uh, and, almost gradius kind of look to yeah. it apparently it's uh, mm-hmm. mixed with uh, endless space I don't know much of that franchise right. or anything of that franchise but um, if it is a franchise but yeah that's those the, the two have merged together there the next one, which is the one that's definitely been uh, least well received, is um, what is it? Armor of Heroes. So Armor of Heroes is uh, sort of a. It's part of their Company of Heroes series. Now the Company of Heroes games are actually really, really good. Like they're they're brilliant. They're, yeah. they're, they're RTS games um, uh, based in uh, World Wars and it's, almost it's, like quite fi- uh, Fire Emblem, but like army almost. Yeah, they're they're fun, fun RTS games. Uh, really, really good. And uh, this is basically them using uh, the tanks from those things on a top-down perspective, and it's basically tank, as in the old Atari Twenty Six Hundred game. Oh, looks like an tank. EU game. Yeah, Marauder. Mar- it looks like Marauder. I don't know yeah. Marauder. Marauder is uh, basically a eight-bit. It's it's on the Commodore sixty four Amstrad. Um, it's uh, like yeah, based off tank in the same sort of manner. Um, mm-hmm. Wandering top-down. Uh, ship uh, wandering around uh, destroying your bases, other enemy tanks getting the power ups, that kind of thing. This looks like a zoomed out, obviously high spec version of that. Yeah, it's basically it's it's a fun little couch co op game. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry, rather a couch um, kill each other game. You know. Yeah. Have you? Did you play this one, Muso? Yes, yes, yeah. we did. Yep, yep. It's um, okay. Uh, I mean, it, it it's a cool and fun idea. I mean, it's basic. It's it's is it's, a twin it's, stick. Has yeah, been... you can. Well, you can select various types of controls on it, so you can set it with tank controls and use the two joysticks to, mm-hmm. you know, left to, to circle left and all that. It, it, yeah, yeah. Um, the controls on this one uh, are not as uh, they, they definitely hold it back, in my opinion. It, this is the least of uh, the least good <laughs> of the four, uh, in all honesty. But it's you know, like a I... Unity store like template. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is what it is, though. It's uh, a little add-on for the Company of Heroes fans, and I am a Company of Heroes fan, so yeah. Uh, it is what it is, really. And then fourth, this is where we start getting a bit controversial, um, we move over to Golden Axed. Ooh. So, oh, yeah, that was, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Which was my favourite out of all of them. Yep. And all right, PC or Australia. Yep, Poor exactly guys. that. I did see a video of this, yes. So, yeah, it's... Uh, they got it's a shame. Hard. I, it's I a rem- shame. I remember the uh, the horrible uh, remake version for yeah. the uh, Sega Classics. Was it? Um... Yeah, yeah. They had, a, oh. they had a compilation over here, Sega Classics, but it's part of the Sega Ages two thousand five hundred. That's it. The Sega Ages version. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was awful. It's horrible. I've not the, seen uh, this yet. The dude that came out with the uh, yeah. flashback about this, uh, he ended up making really cool games. Like a, there's one called Cactus Hat Android. Or Android Cactus, I think, that I played at PAX a few years ago, and it won awards and stuff like that. But then he's getting remembered for like. Sega throwing him over. Hashtag not my golden axe. No, <laughs> yeah. not my golden axe either. I don't think. Um... Uh, so, first, so firstly, what you got to do, you got to put yourself back into the mind of this was a. Uh, I want to say 2003. I'll have to check my notes, but basically, yeah, it, it was about 2003 when they when uh, the Sega Studios in Australia were, went out to actually uh, uh, to, to see if they were going to make this. This was part of a Sega Reborn series. So this is what I actually talked about when I made my uh, complete history series because there was a like a concept trailer released of this. Um, basically, 
the idea was it was going to be uh, like sort of a hub world, and they would make a reborn series, sort of like what was it? Was it Konami? No, Capcom that did the the, the rebirth series with um, the Castlevanias and stuff. Castlevania. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. So th- that was basically what they were going to do with this. So this was something that was made within only two weeks. Uh, we'll get into the crazy conditions that the guy was in when he was making it over those two weeks. Uh, but it was something made an incredibly small amount of time and mm. um yeah the game itself it's finished one five minutes there's a lot missing like for instance you can't do any kind of your special power-ups like you know you push your a or what it would be on a mega drive controller um and you know you have the dragon head come down or you know or, yeah. or your different potions yeah. none of that works in this you can, you can see this is based off a generic engine yeah you can see this yeah what what i'm also noticing is even with that guy who's playing it he's supposed to be showing how good it is He's having trouble hitting so oh, no, this his... is just this is a random let's play that I've pressed and played. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. I was going to say, but you can see it's. It, I think it'd be, oh, it'd be frustrating uh, to play. I think the color palette's really I, drab as well. I call mm. it. I call it the uh, golden asset flip. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the thing is also what you got to remember is this was a time when not just Sega, like all companies were like. We've got those old franchises. Let's make them 3D. And Sam oh, Golden Axe is one of the worst people to do that. They done Jeez. that Beast Rider game. Um, yeah, but Golden, Golden Axe, even the original, was almost pseudo 3D in that your character yeah. could move up and you know your character could move in four directions. Oh no, no, I like the I'm amount of bodies is, that stay in this without despawning. By the way, there's like a pile of them there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Hyper realism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. so no Be- Beast Rider is a, a, a heavily panned um, uh, 3D uh, almost open worldy sort of uh, game. It, it was it was absolutely dreadful. And the guy who made this, I'm, I'm forgetting his name right now, but he, his idea was to basically merge that style. Obviously, it was a 3D uh, Golden Axe game, but with the classics. So I think what he actually did in only two weeks as well was genuinely actually quite impressive. I mean. It, nowadays, 2020, I don't want this for Golden Axe at all. I'd, I would, I want to see the treatment they gave to Streets of Rage. Like Streets of Rage 4 was a fantastic yeah. homage yeah. to the original series. Um, and when you see all of those failed concepts along the way, like you know, it's, it's sad that we had to wait so long for Streets of Rage, but Sega did the right thing by constantly saying no to all of those concepts because we would have had a Streets of Rage that looked like this. And in retrospect, I, I, everyone would have panned it and hated it. Um, but this was 2003, and I think what the guy was doing for 2003 standards was actually quite impressive. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a fair point. I can, yeah, I can, I, can, I can say that. It just, I think the thing about it, the problem is, it loses the Golden Axe character, doesn't it? That's the it, thing. It, it's if I didn't know this was Golden Axe, I would say this was a Conan game. Yeah, <laughs> like even, even as I watch it, like I can hear it's, the Golden Axe music in my head. It's it's not the it's not the the battle soul, or even the callbacks. You can, you can see this has got the callbacks and stuff like that going on. It just mm-hmm. doesn't have the the character of, of what Golden Axe had, the, you know, the garish colours, the bright colours, the sort of like the yeah. real sort of mythical fantasy Conan, of what was of. going on, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, like like, like the um, like those <clears throat> lizard birds Ex- yeah, that were exactly. bright pink and yellow. Uh, the dude's yeah. name is Santana Mishra. Okay. Okay. And you look at the uh, things like, yeah, you want to see Jason and the Argonauts kind of skeletons going on, and yeah. the way they move and the, and the way they sort of shriek at you. And that that the, little imp thing that runs the, out. Yeah, well, <laughs> these are the characters that would make Golden Axe great of what it was, and this what was stripped away in Beast Rider, and it seems not returned. And I can see what they're trying to do. I can appreciate that, but like I think mm-hmm. Dan's correct. If they Have you ever were heard of a re- Space Raiders, make it was it. like a redo of Space Invaders that was like gritty. On like no, GameCube no. and stuff like that, it was awful. I think this is when they revisit classic franchises, try to modernise it. Certain franchises fit only in their time, and yeah. you've got to do something special to bring it back into the modern age. Like they did with Streets, Streets of Rage Four, like Streets of Rage Four, mm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and, and well, like the new Sonic game. Yeah, the new Sonic game, uh, River City um, Girls, is a fantastic latest version in the River City franchise as well, in, in that same sort of genre. Um, I we, we, we will see a new Golden Axe one day. Um, the the and, new Wonder Boys, they're good. It's yeah, a bit yeah, like, Wonder Boys, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, a bit like, it's a bit like when they try and remake classic films, isn't it? Exactly. They never get it right. They, they always <laughs> somehow cock it up. It's yeah. got, oh yeah, it's got this, oh, oh, it is Terminator, but it's not, it's a load of rubbish, really. Remember? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm happy because as, as, as 
I hate using this term, but as a gaming historian, um, I love having <laughs> the ability to be able to um, uh, uh, be able to play this 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 failed demo. And I, 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 I'm sure there was more that we we still have not been able to play. Uh, I would but, say, as a point of preference to have, it's a great thing to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that's and basically like, what it. That's basically what it is. It's just the the very. I mean, it's a very early demo of what they yeah. were working on. Exactly. Yeah. Looks better yeah. than that first one, one that you put up recently. What one was that? It's just a cash grab, but there we go. <laughs> you're not it's cynical, not because it was free. Right? It was free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but you know, but I'm saying it was. It's something from from the past, and they def It was a demo. They were going in the wrong direction. If that had come out as it was, it would have hurt. But it wouldn't. Yeah, but not. yeah, but Andrew, if it had gone through that stage, it wouldn't have come out like it was, would it? Let's be honest. No. This, so, this is very preliminary because there isn't uh, even the boss fight at the end. It's a very, very yeah. preliminary demo. Yeah, thank God and it didn't go any further. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It didn't go any further at all. No. Looks like the old PlayStation Skeleton Warriors game. So um, yeah, I mean that, that, that's what it is. There, there are your four games. Now the we might as well bring this up as well. well we've got to bring this up really. But basically, uh, there was controversy. So. When this came out, they, you know, Sega had said they'd reached out to the original team uh, that worked on this game to, to get it ready for this this sort of mini five day or whatever it was or one week release. Um, and one of the main people that worked on it, I again, you just said the name there. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but basically, uh, he, um, they never reached out to us. <laughs> Santana so, Mishra. Yeah, it was um, it was a bit crazy. So apparently, he's now come out uh, and done a crazy, crazy Twitter thread explaining about how bad it was to work on this game. Uh, the management were absolutely dreadful. They were heavily pushing, like, you know, they basically said, you know, go make a new Golden Axe game, and they were pushing for a more uh, 3D based game, by the sounds of it. Um, well, back back then, there was like zero regulation on making games, and it was the Wild West when it came to uh, crunch time and and ruining people's lives. I mean, especially like even in in Japan, especially with like Nintendo, some of the stories with Shigeru Miyamoto and how they like sleep at their desks and stuff so, oh yeah I mean, the, uh, the, a little bit better in the creation of metroid that he was doing it as well yeah absolutely yeah 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 so, well, metroid too yeah this guy was working 14 hours a day seven days a week and he did that for two weeks uh constantly getting battered and saying it was bad by management or uh, along those lines and then by the end they were like oh actually you've done something really good here uh but he, <laughs> he said it like he really got like battered down and it was uh, apparently a really nasty environment to be a part of and then obviously you know it never got continued on um and uh yeah he had the, the, the devs that were working on it really had to push hard to try and make a game that was like this which was obviously more retro uh and like i say remember this was 2003 when everything was just just make it 3d just make it 3d you know take any platform and turn it 3d no that doesn't work these guys were trying to make something more retro and for 2003, that's a, that's a very commendable thing to do. Uh, they went ahead and done it anyway against the management's wishes and then actually got the pat on the back when they finally did. But during that time, it was not good. Um, they've they've lashed, the, the, the guy had lashed out a little bit on Sega. There was, it, it was, uh, people were saying that they were quite uh, nasty to call the game Golden Axed as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And true. It's true. It's true. It's, Sega came uh, out with like, I... oh, whoops. Yeah, there was apologies made and blah blah blah. That's the no, that's, that's like, basically everything. That's that's what's happened. Sounds like a bit of Sega sense of humor to me. That golden calling it golden axed. So it, it, yeah, it's, it's a very sense of humor thing for them to do. If you, if you don't know that Sega sense of humor, just go to Sonic's Twitter account and you'll see. They've certainly got more humor than Nintendo, but that way. But mm -hmm. yeah, they have. Yeah. They have. <laughs> but you know, when it comes to working conditions, this is you know one side of the story. What's Sega's side of the story? Who knows? You know, I don't know. Um, who knows? Who knows? One, one thing I do know is that I know I, I, it's not just Sega as well. So many companies, but I, especially Sega, yeah. have actually pushed to become a uh, uh, a more friendly uh, base company as as years have gone on. And I know these conditions don't they, they probably do exist, but not as much anymore. That's, as, that's what the corporate environment is, though. Mm. You know, you get involved in a corporate environment. This is sometimes what the what the result is. Um, happens today, it will happen forever. There you go. There you go. So there you go. That is uh, the end of that topic. Sad ending. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> to, sorry to hit everyone with a brutal reality fact there, but. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, moving on, uh, but keeping it Sega actually. Uh, 
strictly limited games uh, are going to be the subject of this particular topic. They are getting physical releases uh, of the Darius game that made its way onto the Mega Drive Mini. So for people that, remember, uh, that don't remember, the Mega Drive Mini uh, obviously came out was that last year. It had two exclusive games on it that were previously, uh, kind of previously not released. There was like a newer version of the original Tetris, which was the rarest game now on the Mega Drive. It was a game that they put out and then instantly recalled and there's believed to be what, something like 10 copies out there in the wild now. It goes for silly money. And the other game um, is they had a new version of Darius made. Now, what's interesting about this, because, you know, there's, there's new Mega Drive games being made a few, fair few times every year. I mean, I've got Xeno Crisis on my shelf and all that sort of thing. But what's interesting about this is that even though Strictly Limited, um, looking at the case, they haven't got the Sega logo on the side or anything like that, What's, what's interesting to me is the fact that this is kind of a exclusive Sega game because Sega have actually put this out on the Mega Drive Mini and now you can get it as a cartridge. So even Half though it has a Sega branding on it, this is still an officially released Sega game for the Mega Drive uh, that you're now going to be able to get. And I just, to me, that blows my mind. The crazy thing about this, um, if you've played the version that was released on the Mega Drive Mini, mm -hmm. it is... So close to an arcade perfect port. That's fantastic. It's ridiculous. Like the the soundtrack on the Mega Drive version is near identical to the arcade. All the same sounds. Because if I remember correctly, the original arcade board that uh, Taito made for Darius used the same kind of sound chip that the Mega Drive actually has in it. Mm -hmm. So it just it, it, it's very very well done game for the Mega Drive. Right. They've had to like beef up the carts at all. Um, maybe that's a good point. Uh, yeah, because you wouldn't know that, would you? Obviously, on the Mega Drive Mini itself, it's just the ROM. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, it would be interesting to to to, to dissect that when it finally uh, finally happens. But what's a um, flash drive? I mean, yes, you can already. I, I've seen live streamers actually get this ROM and play it through Evercades or whatever uh, on their Mega Drive. So they've actually, it does work apparently. But uh, again, it's just a ROM. So I'll be interested to see what they do when this is actually properly on proper hardware. What's interesting about this is fifty uh, euros, uh, which isn't is, is a pretty reasonable price. It's it's pretty standard price actually. But what's interesting about this is that there's two different versions you can get. You can get the sixty hertz version, obviously for your American folk, and you can get the fifty hertz version, which I'm guessing won't sell out as quickly <laughs> <laughs> um uh but still i mean it, it's just it it blows my mind that, that i'm, I'm sure it's on the genesis really and mega drive branding on each one yeah i mean obviously they can't though can they i mean and, and when they do that then they have to go for quality checks with sega uh i know that the guy from that made tanglewood that was it for the mega drive tried to get it officially put out by sega and they, I met they, that they dude. Him. yeah he's a cool guy he's a cool guy yeah, yeah. matt is matt is great um, he uh, yeah, he tried to get it out officially, and they, they just said, "Look, no, we can't. We haven't got the, the 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 testing to be able to put this through quality control correctly." But they wished him well, sort of thing. So I'm guessing that even though they put this out themselves on the Mega Drive Mini, and in my eyes, that means it's an officially put out Sega game. Um, that's why they that's why their names aren't all on this. I box. remember um, Black Market Sega game. Yeah. Speaking to uh, the Tanglewood author about trying to get the license from uh, Sega. Yeah. Mm. Talking, talking at uh, Blackpool with me, James. I'm sure we were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a good guy. So, I mean, there's not really much else to add to this, but I, I just think it's an exciting thing that's coming up. Uh, only 2,000 copies per hertz version that you're going to get. It's 2,000 of 60 hertz and 2,000 of the 50 hertz again. <laughs> that one won't sell out as quickly. Uh, unless you're a hardcore fan like me and you might buy both. But uh, <laughs> Big blue for borders. no reason. Um, I hope that they have the Japanese artwork on them. Maybe we'll see on the reverse cover. We will see. We will see. But yeah, is anyone out there interested in this sort of thing? Anyone out there who's going to get this sort of thing? I definitely will. I'm already... I'm always interested in new Mega Drive games, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's... You, you were right, Game of Muso, in saying that it's an incredibly impressive port. Yes. But with that said... It's far from the best port because what you've got to remember in the arcade that was three screens put together. Um, of course, yeah. yeah. Obviously, this is not. <laughs> no, is, but of course, is it's, this... it's very good for what they've done with it. it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the one that came on the Mega Drive Mini? And yeah, this Genesis is the, this is the exact game. Yes. 
Okay. See, that's the thing. It's like, well, I mean, for the price, you can get the entire Mega Drive Mini, which is why I'm like, <laughs> yeah. why would I? Why would I get this? You know? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's for people that want physical. Machine. Yeah, it's for people who want that physical cartridge and then can go, ooh, and actually put the cartridge in their old Mega Drive. No, I, I mean, I, I get yeah. it. I get it. I, I feel like yeah. I guess I just and the resellers I'm talking like. Maybe I'm talking like an old man, but I feel like I've just progressed that point in my life where I'm just like, I don't care how I'm playing it. I just want to play it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, nice. it's, it's one of those things. You know, I, I'm still buying Mega Drive, uh, Japanese Mega Drive games, but for the most part, I don't actually put the cartridges in the console because I've actually got a, 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 a an Evercade type thing in there that has that game on it already. Um, yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, it does not make sense, especially yeah. now when I'm looking at, oh, I do need Sonic, Sonic uh, and Knuckles, and that's about £100. And I've got it. I don't need that. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, I want it. Um, but it's the same. Well, you, how many you times? Said earlier, you uh, have let me your... ask. Go on, go on. Let, let me ask you, Slum. How, how many times can a company resell you the same game a different uh, way? Ask Nintendo. Depends on the game. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> ask I, Nintendo. I, I, <laughs> hey. Nintendo. You know, the masters of that. Yeah, they're, 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 they're fantastic with it. When the when the Super Mario, uh, what is it, 3D, whatever it is, All Stars, blah blah blah, collection comes out, oh, and it's like, hey guys, it. again, it does look good. Anybody, <laughs> anybody remember? Hang on a second, hang on. Anybody remember? Anybody remember the old games we used to release on the N64? Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I remember. That's basically what it was. That's basically what it is with Nintendo. Yeah. It's true, but it, it's very true. But you can't argue that Mario 64 and Mario 3D World are fantastic games. Like, oh, they are. Yeah. They are. 100%. No, but it's, again, just basically selling emulated games, isn't it? it? That's what they're doing. It's right. And those shilling off their franchises, of course. Did, did you buy yeah. the uh, the 3D pack smash? I did, yes. And there you go. And I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I... I have all three I finished of the Galaxy games for already, the first time on that. But I'm like, I, 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 I'm not saying I'm innocent, by the way. I, I'm it's, just um, as bad as a lot of people. And, oh, absolutely. I mean, I got you, it because... You, you want to get that Pong machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. And I, I, I wanted to get it because my son plays the Switch a lot. Mm-hmm. And he just started playing um, uh, uh, Mario Sunshine. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. no, 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 hold off. Hold off because you can play on your Switch. That way you don't have to be using the TV when I want to play a game yeah. on it. So, oh, so it made my, my, sense in that perspective. My, my son's just like, have you got another Mario game? He's, just, he's like now in love with Mario. Like, have you got another Mario game? you got yeah. another Mario game to play. And he's like, can I play on the Wii U? And I'm like, Look, don't worry about it. And I'm sitting there thinking, I might go and buy a Super Mario, new Super Mario Brothers Wii U or whatever it was called yeah. again. And I do not need that game again because I own it on the <laughs> you know, Switch. You know what you just made me think so of? Familiar. It, 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 what's wild is... Our whole life, we had to wait in anticipation for each one of them, and now they're here. It's like, oh, they're all here. Here's some more of them. Here's some more. They're all here. Here <laughs> yeah. you go. Here's another one. Here's another all one. Of, all of this. And I'm only a week all. away from getting Pikmin free in the post as well. Which oh, I right. Yeah. <laughs> all of this, it's like, what, all blows, of what blows my mind is a GTA Five, like three uh, generations of oh nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. Or, it? or Skyrim, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This Mario talk, all this Mario talk is so so familiar because it's like the what am I going to get the, uh, the 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 kids um, the, the, my daughters uh, they love their switches and they got through like Pokemon Diamond and whatever it's called like instantly it's like okay right, what's next so uh, 3D um, 3D World uh, pack came out it's like, oh they love 3D World on the on the Wii U so I'll get them that they'll get through that in like seconds. <laughs> It's like so galaxy sunshine oh yeah 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 yeah. more mario more mario it's like you're milking a franchise that's basically been going for the last 30 years it's the same game really isn't it yeah that's yeah. how they get I mean, a grip on you when you're young though the, yeah. their, their next <laughs> mini type console it's got uh, it's only got the original mario on it again they did us all didn't it i mean that 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 game is just it's it, it's, it's just like in the blood um you even the most avid nintendo haters can't deny how important that character and that game franchise has been to the entire gaming sphere exactly yeah yeah um so you know you could say oh i hate nintendo you know for whatever reason you know they're licensing the way they are with copyright whatever but you can't deny that their franchises are rock solid they are they're fantastic they're fantastic they are 
They are, but it's generally they, uh, the reason like to buy the console is for the Nintendo games. Yes, because yeah. they don't allow full access to the architecture yeah. of the hardware for third party developers. Yeah, they just yeah. don't. Yeah, unless they get hacked later down, down yeah. the line, of course. But then yes. they yep. get, get a squiffy about that, don't they? I, I'm still bitter <laughs> that we've not had a that you know we we're, we're not getting a brand new really good Star Fox game. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Kev, what you wish for the last one? <laughs> the last there, one. Is yeah. a, there is a there is a caveat I put to this, uh, and I know people might find this a little bit mm, controversial, but I I do I, ha- I have a slight admiration for Nintendo and the way they behave. It, it's I know it's quite protectionist, but. It's something that they created and their their developers created, and you've got to admire the way they avidly really protect it. I admired it until I went to EGX a few years ago. Yeah. Um, this is before I'd even started up my YouTube channel saying, or anything, yeah. really. And I mean, before you start, James, I, I just want to say I'm not saying I agree with what they do. I'm just saying I admire it. It's, mm-hmm. it's the way they stringently go by the same. They've been so consistent. This is better in, than the presidential in, debate. In, in, you know, in that aspect. No, 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 <laughs> no not, not that at all. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, you have you have this sort of admiration for it, and and you and you you got to give them respect for that alone. And you know, this does tail onto other things. But sorry, carry on, mate. All, all I was going to say is my own personal experience before, like I said, before I'd even start a channel or anything like that. Um, Basically, at EGX, they were not letting anybody anywhere near the Nintendo first-party games mm. unless they were a YouTuber, a Twitch streamer, and they met Nintendo's subscriber requirements. They were actually <laughs> asking people to show their yeah, subscriber numbers before they would get allowed into the Nintendo area. Yeah, the precursor to substandard. Yeah. yeah. So it was that, for me, <clears throat> kind of told me all I needed to know about how they were doing things. It was kind of like, so you're not just letting regular people in to try these games out unless you think that there's somebody who's going to review the game and give you free promotion, etc. It, it just it. didn't, yeah, it just didn't seem fair to me. You are the product. Because there were, well, I mean, there I, were, can, yeah. I can see where they're coming from, though. Like, they, they only have so much space in there and time for people, and they're paying to get all the setup and all the stuff in there, so they that's the whole reason they're doing I, it, is to get the yeah, promotion. Yeah, I wouldn't there. go down that route, though. I, don't I, know, would, I, I wouldn't say that Nintendo are unique in that attitude, either. I would, no. say, that, I would say that Sony... Like the PlayStation 5 certainly, pre-orders. Certainly, Microsoft would, it, were in that frame of, same frame of mind as well. Mm. I mean, why would you get, like, you know, with all due respect, some nobody like me going, oh, well, we'll review your Xbox game. Microsoft will say, who the f*** are you? You know what I mean? It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it, that's, that's business sense, to have yeah, something yeah. of an audience to amplify their product. You know, they're not going to get a target, a, a tiny audience. So I can understand why they would do that. Yes, it's, you know, it's a bit shitty, but you yeah. can see why, on a business point of view, they would do it. Because at the end of the day, yes, they're game developers. Yes, we love the games. And we love the games they produce, but they are still businesses, and they've got to keep a bottom line. I yeah. know it's horrible to speak like that, but it—that's it, the truth. Matt, fact of the matter it, it is. It is. It is. I mean, look at it this way: it's not common just to the games industry. Look at the car industry. You go to a motor show, you're looking at the brand new Mercedes or whatever. Yeah. There, they're going to say you can maybe say to the guy, "Oh, it's very pretty," and he'll nod and agree with you, yes. But if you <laughs> ask to be one of you blitz to go out back in the car park and okay. do laps, laps around in it, they're going to go. No, get out, scum. Maybe it's a bit different as a musician. I don't know because if you walk into if you walk into a guitar shop and say, "Can I try that really expensive guitar?" All they say is, "Yeah, sure, as long as you don't play Stairway to Heaven on it, you're fine." Yeah, but a (laughs) shop is different to a trade trade show. That's different because they want you to buy it. Yeah, you know they want you to. Well, I mean, to them, how how is it? How is it any different from? I'm just uh, not to harp on this, but. Like say say you go into a uh, Austin Martin car dealership and yep. you look like a raggedy homeless man. They're not going to be like, "Oh, get in the car and drive it." They're going to be like, uh, "Why don't you show us your bank account and make sure you can afford one of these before you get in it?" And I feel like that's the way Nintendo is approaching that situation. Yeah, but, but but yeah, I mean, because also it's it's like a pre assumption kind of thing. But unfortunately, they, right. these prerequisites do exist in real life. You know, you yeah. can't. Right. Get, no, it, totally, it, it, it does happen. It, it, it can't, get, happen. can't I, get away from that. 
I remember days. there was a massive oh, queue to, ch- to play the Division 2 when I went to an EGX a couple of years ago, whenever it was, and I went to the front. And I was like, oh, hi, yeah, I'm a YouTuber. I'd really like to, to look at your game. They just sent me straight into the front. <laughs> I can understand why. We'll put it yeah. way, I'm just being honest. It, just, it happens. It does. Pax is kind of similar, yeah. At the end of the day, successful companies are successful for a reason. Nintendo have been going for this long for a reason. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, they, they could have flopped so many times. When we, we, we've seen their flops in the past. We've seen the Virtual Boy. We've seen, to you know, I hate to say it, the Wii U. I knew uh, it was going to be painful for you to say that. Yeah. It's <laughs> very, very painful oh. for me to say that because I love the Wii U. Wii U is great, yeah. Uh, the Wii U is fantastic. But I, it is, it, I, I know, I can see the figures, I can see the, the, the money. Yes, it was a flop. And then they massively bounce back with the Switch, which essentially is just recycling 50% of its game from the Wii U anyway. Mm-hmm. And you got to sort of like, tip your hat and say you know what fucking hell with nintendo well done you know what i mean you've really it proves you've though that it's not all about the games is it because yeah. uh you know uh it's all about the games like, well, no it's not because you didn't play the games when it was on the wii u but now you're loving them on the switch so, you know yeah. they're very clever with market judgment they're, they're very clever with that sometimes they make their faux pas yes they do but they sometimes they're very clever with where the market's going to go what where, where they can see an opening and this is of course this is detriment to sega as well of course you know sega dropped out of the consoles because of that reason of not seeing where things were going and spending too much money on certain focusing on things which weren't going to be you know what i mean mm-hmm. you know well, it's like I, I remember reading years ago uh i think with sony's makes most of their money from life insurance in Japan, Microsoft through a bunch mm-hmm. of other stuff, they can take maybe one or two flop consoles before they're out. While yeah. Nintendo has enough bank, they can pretty much lose every generation like twice and then make one really good one, then lose twice and then make a really good one and they'll survive. Yeah. They've, well, yeah. They've, made, they've made so much, they've got so much on the back of their old classic systems. They've still, they're still riding on those in a way. They're still riding on the, the DS the Game Boy, the NES, Pokemon Red and Blue, the Snares. Exactly, they're still riding on these things. So when when a flop comes along, that's like ah, okay. We'll I've, try I've always it. seen them as like the sort of the Disney of the video game industry, like, yeah, like the way Disney or Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Like, yeah, the, mm. you 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 buy a like a, a, a Sony or a Microsoft, but you then also get a Nintendo, and it's like you know you have Netflix or Amazon, but then you also get Disney Plus. It's like, yeah. you know, it's yep. everything about them is that they're, they're that sort of company, you know, not so much unique, now. Very with, unique. Yeah, not so much now with like them, they're, they're streaming a lot of the stuff Disney do. But, you know, when it was like a really big deal that like, oh, my God, Little Mermaid's coming back on VHS or DVD. <laughs> like, that's the way that Nintendo act with, like, oh, my yeah. God, like, Mario 64 is coming back. And, and, you know, it's such a massive deal and they can charge full price for that again. Yeah. Um, it's the, it's the same sort of model as Disney, and they, 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 they keep that family friendly and they try and make sure everything. They just seem like that. And now they're getting into oh. the theme park space as well. <laughs> yeah. I always find it interesting how, like, the marketing against them from, like, Sega and Sony and Microsoft and such back in the day was always like, Nintendo is the dumb kitty thing. Look at our cool, yeah. trendy, oh, yeah. adult looking thing. But it hasn't done a dent because even you reach, like, the teenage years and you're like, oh, I'm done with Nintendo. That's kitty. You reach like 30 and you're buying these mini consoles again. Like, yeah, well, and you also realize that, oh, actually, no, they are really good. It's the same like when, when, yeah. you, when you become a teenager, you're not into Disney films anymore. Like, ah, oh, no, I don't want to watch something called Beauty yeah. and the Beast. That we're talking about, but I mean, uh, all of my friends, like, I know when they eventually get kids, they all say, like, you know what, those Disney films are actually really good to watch, they're pretty good. I'm like, of course, they're fucking good, like, Stinging they're, they're, frozen they're, <laughs> yeah, they're really yeah. good. And, and it's like, you know, like, oh, actually, no, Nintendo games are really, actually, really good. Of course, they are, like, they, they are literally the best at what those sort of games that they, well, make. they do, of what they do. Yeah, I mean, this is a thing a lot of it with a, a question you could always put out there is like, um, how important are Nintendo to the gaming sphere? I would oh, say they're hugely, they're very, hugely important, very yeah. important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say important yeah, to a point that. of where they're possibly number one, number two in importance. That's how I'd say, yeah. important they are. What, what they've done, what like they've created. Exactly. And the things, I mean... Uh, Creating you, genres uh, and blah, blah, blah. A, a tiny example. A tiny example of something they developed that everybody wanted to copy was the D-pad. There's an example. They created mm-hmm. that, that, that iconic tactile feedback on that you get on that nintendo d-pad 
No one could have replicated. No one could try and replicate that. They all tried to, but they never could until the patent ran out. And then, of course, you know, it, it was everywhere. But it was on the NES, and it was on the Super Nintendo, and it was on the Game Boy. And that I always think of that, like a. Oh, keep going. Yeah, sorry. That, that painted that patented very very specifically designed D pad could not be replicated on anything else. And I think the other one I, I always think of Genesis is oh, oh. Sorry, say that again. I was going to say, I hated the Genesis D-pad. I got calluses yeah. like crazy after <laughs> just an hour. They, couldn't <laughs> replicate, they were not allowed to replicate what Nintendo had done. Neither could Sony. That's why That's why on the on the, on the DualShocks you don't get the same D-pad. You still don't well, now. Uh, like the one I always think of is a third-person type stuff without Z-targeting type things. Yeah. Like It would be so hard to shoot things or aim at things or anything like that unless Nintendo had come up with it way back when. Yeah. Exactly, and, uh, and I think it was mostly important, especially on the Game Boy. Very important on the Game Boy because you needed, with others, you know, when you were like separated from the console, you sort of like had a disconnect from it, didn't you? But when you were with the Game Boy, you are right there in it. You're on it. You're holding the damn thing, and you need that instant sort of like. It's like iPhone games wouldn't exist without the Game Boy, I reckon. Yeah, well, exactly. Oh, they would eventually, definitely. Yeah. I don't know. Like, but uh, so yeah, Darius for the Mega Drive. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get it. <laughs> back, back, back to stop. Back to topic. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, Twenty yeah, minutes talk about Nintendo. There. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know how that segment's gonna get cut up when I put it on the podcast. But yeah, uh, we we, lo- we all seem to love Nintendo, except for P. Ferrer in the chat. He seems to fucking hate Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Reading that, I, I was like, hey, I'm just looking at that. Yeah. So I know. Good. Yeah, it was a love. I wouldn't say it was a love. I would say it was a love hate kind of thing. I'd say uh, we appreciate what they do, but we know their errors and. Oh, yeah. we can we can appreciate it, but the fact of the matter is, no Nintendo console ever had blast processing, so you know. Right. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> In motion engine. Nintendo has the Super FX chip. <laughs> uh, and here we go. And moving on to our final topic, topic number six. Ruffian Games have been bought out by Rockstar. So Ruffian Games are the company that uh, were known for things like Crackdown 2, Crackdown 3. They worked on a lot of Kinect stuff as well with Microsoft. Like no, they, they weren't the sole people behind it, but they worked on things like Connect Star Wars and Connect Sesame Street and Connect no, Nike Connect Training, and they also worked on things like Halo Master Chief Collection. So they've got some great stuff behind them, and like they're, they're obviously a very talented team. But yes, they have been bought out by Rockstar, now known as Rockstar Dundee. No one knows really what they're going to be doing with them, but the guess is, as they're moving into the PlayStation Five, and they need to revamp GTA Five again for some reason, which blew my mind. <laughs> <they've done that. laughs> But, um, Rockstar Dundee sounds like a movie. Like, you yeah. talk about revamping games. I, I think Rockstar might be fucking chasing up with Nintendo a little bit. So, there. Like, blows my so, mind that that's a thing. I completely no, bet on the I, 360, oh. my God. So, so, Same, yeah. We were just talking about big bully boy companies. Rockstar, hello. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell, tell you what I want. I'll tell you what I want. Not GTA Remastered. I want GTA Dundee. We yeah. haven't to get oh, yeah. gag <laughs> on a Ford Cortina. Yeah. Some guys oh, my God. Back. All right, oh, wait, so awesome. we so we haven't we have an Aussie on here. So <laughs> let's hear him say that's not a game. This is a game. Yes, you know, just like because that's that's what my as soon as I heard Rockstar Dundee, that's where my mind went straight to Crocodile Dundee. Oh, I, I want to say GTA <clears throat> GTA Sydney. <laughs> GTA Sydney. That's not a game. I mean, they haven't really. This is a game. Them. You can destroy the Opera House. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Oh, ouch. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk about them uh, getting people in to do remasters. We're going into these revamps again. Uh, the first Red Dead is a, a, a heavily, heavily rumoured. It has been for a very long time. Um, and, yeah, uh, so, yeah, they've, they've basically bought it out. Rockstar Dundee is the new... I'm surprised. Right? I'm, I'm surprised why they've never just decided to sort of, like, remaster GTA 3. Why not do that? I mean, you could put render all the GTA Five style graphics even more now. They're doing Nintendo style a three D no, collection but, one day. But, you, but yeah, but use GTA Three's sort of theme and setting and story and everything, and then put all the heavy good stuff on it. And I think that'd be pretty good. I, I don't think I don't go on, really have that much nostalgia. I was just gonna say I don't really have that much nostalgia for the three, even though it was life changing. 
It was. I played it so much. I, I literally, I, I played it more than any other game in college outside of Smash Brothers. And and I feel like in that is, I, I burned myself out games. with it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to return to it. I'm like, okay, let's let's get a new city and new graph. I don't, I don't feel like it's the type of game that needs a remaster. I think you would be surprised at the amount of people that didn't complete GTA Three. I don't GTA Three. I, I think it just shows how good games are getting. Like games are definitely getting better. I know people always love their retro games, and I'm one of those people as well. But I do think games are getting better, and right. mm. GTA Three was an insanely amazing jump. Yeah. Uh, they, they're someone that done 3D well. Um, yeah. You know, like they're the people that made the jump from you know the top down GTA One to London. Would you say? To would you say the real quick? Would you say that's the biggest jump in gaming history from from its the previous same franchise? Game. Yes, oh, yeah. it's up top there, five. isn't it? It's from definitely its, up there from, it, from its previous title. It's a huge jump because like I'd say it's a bigger jump than Mario sixty four Mario, well, from Mario World. We'll put it this way. I, I, I know you probably not, I don't, don't know whether that. people are going to agree with this, but I, I, I thought GTA Two was actually a step down from GTA One. So, <laughs> I thought I like the London one. GTA Three, oh, GTA London was good. Yeah, but it was an add-on disc. So, GTA Three was like jumping from GTA One to, from me because it was like I, I had GTA Two and I loved it, but I thought no, it's this. It was I, PlayStation's version of like the Mario jump. It wasn't as good as GTA One for me. So, yeah, it, GTA 3 was more like a, G, a jump up from that for me. And I, I think that if you could remaster GTA 3, bring it up to sort of the GTA 5 level, possibly even beyond GTA 5 level, I think that would actually be a good seller. Or at least, it, or at least be an add-on to a future GTA. Yeah, I, I think mean, that's sort of like a DLC sort of. Mm, mm. I really want GTA is, with... Scotland now. I really do. <laughs> the, the thing is with GTA 3, though, G- it's, GTA it's, Red Root. <laughs> it was an impressive game. It was great fun to play, you know, finally putting all your cheats in to be able to get the, get the planes to fly up and learning how <laughs> to actually keep them going and all that sort of thing. And like obviously memorizing trying to build it. up the, the you get the tanks to chase you, which is always good fun in, in, in the GTA yeah. games. Doing stuff like that is good, but honestly... I don't know how many people completed it because the storylines and the the way you actually play these games have definitely got better. Like GTA Five and Four, uh, you can definitely see the progression from Three, Four, and Five. Like the um, the, it was a lot more people fun finish games to play. More too. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't think Three Three was that's true because with Three of the, you, after yeah, and after you complete a fetch quest, sometimes you'd be like, I don't know what the hell to do next. Like, there's no like guide to go anywhere. You'd, you'd be in one of those situations. Well, but then also, yeah. the next thing is just like another fetch quest and another fetch quest. But the, when, the, when they've yeah. moved into number five now and you jump between the different characters and the different things that you do and then there's like, there was like a sub area as well and that. And it, they've done so many different things now to keep the gameplay interesting. Where yeah. originally with GTA 3, I mean, there's nothing against GTA 3 because it was the first of its, you know, of, the, of this kind that did it this well. Um, uh, it was very much the same mission over and over. Very, so like going back to like Middle of Honor. Yeah, like I days. think yeah. if they remastered it, it wouldn't be. I think people would realize that wow, there isn't, isn't much game here. Uh, mm, yeah. Going from five back to three. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just. I'm, I'm uh, sat here literally thinking up a storyline for GTA Scotland as we speak. So. Well, <laughs> in all seriousness, here, B Tribble in the chat. Well, B Tribble in the chat here jokingly just said GTA London 1969, jokingly, right? But imagine a GTA game where you're working for the craze or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be mm-hmm. awesome. I mean, yeah. G- G- GTA London 2020. That'd be we had the getaway, didn't you? I think that's <laughs> what we were going for. We just yeah. hide away in underground bunkers and wear masks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Because they, they would add, because obviously in GTA games now, there are some pretty crazy missions on there. So you'd have it, you know, it's like, right, boys, a, a couple of lads say they've seen the Loch Ness Monster. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive up to the lock and bomb the bastard. You know, it's something like that. It, yeah. You could see that happening. <laughs> if, yeah, if they turned it into that, like a bloody, you know, if they turned it into a, a a GTA game over here, because obviously they did with London 1969, so they could do something like that that is set yeah. somewhere in in a different country, I suppose. The countryside would look really <clears throat> nice too. Twist, yeah. yeah. The, the twist in that story was that they're not <clears throat> spotted the Marcus monster; they've actually spotted Nicola Surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's um I, the, the only thing I really hope for because I think I think they've nailed like the style of GTA like the, the amount of different things you did in GTA Five it was never boring it was so much fun yeah yeah um, uh, mm. the only thing that I want them to do now is I, I'd love I'd just give me GTA Six in that same style but I want them to be a bit more experimental the way the way they were with Vice City like. There hasn't been a GTA with more style than Vice City. Well, with the Vice Crackdown City people now, they might do that. So a lot of people in the chat are actually saying like a GTA getaway. That's a good, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. GTA mm. getaway. Oh, yeah. You could do GTA 5. Uh, sorry, GTA 3. Remaster GTA 3, but put like getaway um, influences into it to make it more varied. Mm-hmm. You know, that would be cool. And that, you've got the standard GTA the setting. Family. There's, there's like, there, you know, like the free GTA free type setting. That's good. Uh, the Vice City was stunning. Chinatown Wars was was actually a really <coughs> bloody good game. Yeah. And um, um, like now they seem to be trying to rehash the look of GTA Three. I, I think, and obviously, and, and, and obviously things like San Andreas. I want them to be more experimental. I want them to. Uh, I, I, uh, like Grand Sleeping Hips Dogs space. was such a breath of fresh air. I want something like that again. I want something. I want them to change it up a bit. Imagine if One minute, can I say something real quick um, as far as GTA 5 and the prospect of GTA 6? Mm-hmm. Um, just checking real quick here. GTA 5, the day it released, they made $800 million. <laughs> and now, every single day that goes by, they make over $1 million per day on, on revenue. <laughs> uh, GTA 6 it's actually, it's like actually closer... Years. It's, it's actually almost closer to two million a day, insane. Uh, and and that was in 2019. Uh, and it's been out since when now? When did it come out? 2013. 2013. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2013. So it makes over a million dollars a day. Yeah. So Amazing. that's why uh, I think it's a gigantic risk to come out. Yeah, because not everyone's going to import over to the other it's one. Amazing. Exactly. It'd be like so making World probably, Warcraft too. Right. So they're probably. I mean, they're probably well and done with six, or at least pretty close to it and they're probably like well actually let's just hold off on this because <laughs> yeah. no game in history has ever made idea. the kind of money <laughs> seriously they could t- totally destroy their entire monetary GT system forever. by right oh, so because... i mean it's just gamers yeah. are doing it to themselves shooting themselves in the foot by participating in it but it just goes to show how much freaking money rockstar is making off of that franchise off of that game that yeah. one game so can, can someone insane. explain is, is gta six a five for the next generation system is it like a new hd remaster again uh yeah that's what it felt like when they opened up the ps5 uh has trailer a with it Bloody yeah they're just gonna add ray tracing to it that's it yeah that's nuts that they're doing it again i really want to uh, that's one video i'm really excited to watch like a digital foundry on or something like that just see that line that goes down the middle and then i have to put it on full screen and i have to like squint my eyes get really close like oh yeah i kind of see the difference i think like, yeah. never you'll be able to see the out. crack in trevor's uh, crack pipe <laughs> <laughs> never, really <laughs> play it. never really found out when to play it after ps3 though that's the thing never played it after that i played it on i played it on the playstation 4 i've, I've got i got it in a bundle of games actually i was like yeah let's try this out i'm like oh, fuck it, it is a good game like, <laughs> it's really good. I've still never played it. It's a good game. It is a good game. I got, a, I got it free from the Epic Store on PC. I just haven't bothered to install it yet. Yeah. It got big I've never played online. isolation and stuff because it's like role playing yeah. in it now and like it's huge on Twitch. I must, be, yeah. I must be showing my age because I think I, I think if I talk about hours clocked on all the GTA games, I still think I must have clocked more hours on GTA 1. <laughs> <laughs> But this it's is so this, exciting finding the tank in the original GTA, wasn't it? It was great. But this is a, this is a side yeah. topic from this, but and this is something that worries me about the next generation. Are we just going to get the same games just rehashed with a bit more spit and polish again? Yeah, that's going to be the next three generations. I mean, it's getting so expensive to develop a game that it it makes more business sense to just yeah. spit out the are same game gonna, again. And are they going to? Because gamers have proved yeah. time and time again, they'll, and I'm I fall for it too. Buying the same game you already own, yeah, like because it's not new. Who cares? You mean no one's playing you online on this one? I have to rebuy it again. It's weird, exactly. isn't it? As a gamer, I will buy a game, and oh, that was a really good game. You know, it stays on the shelf. The next generation of console comes out, and I haven't played that game once again ever, and then it gets remastered on the next generation system oh i'll buy that again i'd like to play that again even though it's like really yeah. dusty on my shelf but i'll buy it again because i want to play last of that's, us again that's pick that's pikmin 3 it is <laughs> right? exactly oh to, to be fair I, I completed the original pikmin 3 on the switch uh, on the wii u I, 
at least ten times. I freaking adore that game. It's, it's my favorite it's game. Such a great game. It's such a great game. I saw a meme the other day, which was a dude in a shirt store looking at a shirt saying, "I wouldn't pay thirty dollars for a shirt." Goes to a game store. He's like, hundred twenty dollars. Hell yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Is uh yeah it's uh yeah but that, that that yeah that's the the world we're moving into. It always reminds me when um the the Square Enix rebooted the Tomb Raider franchise and they put such an incredible uh, amount of money that they were expecting to make off it. Uh, it like done COD money. so so well, but it didn't make that target that it wanted, and it was just like what were they expecting? So they eventually made their money back by remastering it for the next generation, and that's the only. I mean. I would I would love if there was like a law somewhere, uh, you know, that said you can only remaster a game if it's two generations ahead, like you know, at least, because when it when a gener when it's gone from PlayStation three to PlayStation four, I don't know, it just doesn't. Like, oh no, don't do that. We don't well, then it comes to if you do that with movies comes... too, it would destroy Sony's like game and cinema. <laughs> yeah. uh, it I've comes seen, down to I've... game gamer accountability. If people are going to be buying it, if oh, you're yeah, the business, yeah. just from their standpoint. Like I said, we're, I mean, we're, if, we're if, guilty of it. I'll, I'll I... do it. Oh, I think it's well. Remarkable. I mean, people were people thought it was crazy when when Rockstar gave out uh, GTA Five on the Epic Game Store during a sale. They're like, "Oh my God, GTA Five's free!" And it's like, yeah, because they want. It's like it's like a drug dealer giving free drugs yeah. the first time to someone. <laughs> and like, oh, you want more? Come on and buy some like, DLC with it. I, <laughs> I think I was about a year ago because of my um YouTube Red. It's not called YouTube Red anymore. YouTube membership, whatever it is. Uh, Google sent me a uh, Google thingy mini, the what do you call it, the one you talk to, and uh, oh the Google Home was, thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. Them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And they sent me it for free, and they're like, oh here's for like paying for all this stuff for like so long. And then when I got it, that was when because uh, it was because my Google Drive which I paid for. And then when they sent me it, I subscribed to YouTube's membership so I could play music on it. And I was like, okay, I realize what you're doing now. Like, yeah, <laughs> they, they got, got you there. there. So you got you there. Tap, tap, mm -hmm. tap, 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 tap. Yeah. Mm. So yes, anyway, as we were saying, yes, Rockstar have bought out Ruffian Games. Uh, it is now Rockstar Dundee. People don't really know what's going on uh, with them yet, but um, it's very likely that the studio that made games such as Crackdown 2, Crackdown 3, personally not my style of games, but still very, very well-respected games, um, are now going to be part of that big old Rockstar uh, uh, ecosystem where basically they just... You work on the, the trees. You work on the. You know. Uh, you know. It's obviously not going to be like that, but essentially that. You know. They, they just do the EA etc. style. It's just they, they've almost broken a company that would make bigger games themselves, which is what people are kicking off about. But it's business, isn't it? At the end of the day. Well, when I think of the biggest competitor, I think of like Sleeping Dogs and Crackdown. Now that there's no drivers' games. Mm -hmm. Driver, no. Eh? Oh, they weren't that good. <laughs> in retrospect, you go back and play a driver game now. My God, I worked at a game store when Driver Three came out, and so many people bought it back the next day. Really, I can't even make it past the first mission of Driver. <laughs> yeah, I remember I rented that from Blockbuster, and I was like, I, I literally can't get out of this garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wasn't the um, Stuntman games based on? Or was it the Getaway? It was either Driver or the Getaway. Uh, basically, they, they basically just made uh, an extra sort of game, and it ended up being the stuntman games on the PlayStation Two, and they were. Oh yeah, awesome. yeah. I like that because the engine was really good. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I really like the stuntman games. And I've actually got people, those. Be before you move past the Rockstar thing, too. Another another tidbit people forget about how much money Take Two, the parent of Rockstar, has. They are nearly a twenty billion dollar company, and Nintendo Nintendo is. Uh, just over sixty billion. So we're looking at roughly a third of the value of Nintendo. That's how big Take Two is. Just from like a publisher. Yeah. Just from a publisher. Just from one game. Like yeah, literally, I guess one you could, game. Mostly, mostly one, game. one game, and they are Ooh. literally almost a third of the value of Nintendo. So like nearly Bobby type evil. <laughs> all from a all from a version of a game that was based off um, All Points Bulletin. <laughs> one thing oh, wow, um, that brings me back. one exciting thing I would like to see about this is if they aren't going to make another GTA 6 because they're just 
constantly pumping it into the online of GTA 5 and remastering GTA 5 over and over. I would like them to continue working on some of their other franchises. Like it sounds ridiculous, but like the table tennis games, yeah, the ping, ping pong yeah. one and um, that bully and things like that. And I, I want them to do more stuff like that. I think they bully these days. People would like go nuts. I would like, I'd like to see them do bully. Game. I want to see bully. Yeah. But there we go, and guys, I think we've actually ended the uh, we're at the end of the stream. We've still got thirty odd people watching, which ain't bad. I mean, we've been chatting almost off topic for about two hours, so, <laughs> so that's all good. I think and, off um, topic is the new one. I was oh, going to say that's what happens when you invite me to a stream. I'll, I'll take it off topic immediately. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all good. It's all good. It's good to have you on here. Absolutely. Um, I think we're at the end, though, guys. Which means it's time to say goodbye, and uh, oh. let's get let's run down our, our list of uh, people we have in this chat, and everyone can uh, shout out and promote themselves, whatever they want to do. Uh, Andrew, what do you want to promote? Well, I'm going to promote something very exciting. I can't quite say what it is yet, but oh. I would say, as you know, I'm involved in the uh, documentaries In Search of Tomorrow and In Search Ooh. of Darkness Part Two. Ooh. If we have any. Um, well, any fans uh, who wish to see certain content, I would advise them to keep an eye on the social media for In Search of Darkness. For the next Ooh. few days, there's something very, very exciting happening next weekend. Yes, yes. Good stuff, that doco. Definitely. Yeah. And what about you, Mr. Mike Towns? Uh, I make Game Boy games. Uh, websites, uh, Game Boy games, but like B-U-O-Y, like a ocean boy. And, yeah, uh, I sell carts, so I, I flash them onto carts and sell them to on Etsy. Job done, job done. And Mr. Novabug. Novabug? Sorry, yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> anything you would like to promote? Uh, well, we have a rather exciting video coming up. Um, yes. me, me and you. Um, yeah. That I want to promote that, of course, because I'm very excited to see that coming out. Um I think we've worked quite hard on it, haven't we? Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be very good. Um, as, aside from myself, uh, my channel, very tiny and minuscule, but never mind. Uh, I focus on generally Amstrad, the Amstrad platform. But I do a very unique show on uh, Saturday nights called Live Testing, where I take 30-year-old uh, cassette games and stick them in an Amstrad and see if they work. <laughs> and... Uh, and it seems nice. to have quite a following. So if you're interested in any uh, comedy and that kind of stuff when it comes to the old 8-bit platforms, then, uh, yeah, pop over to my channel and give me a sub. It'd be very nice. You remember when you used to have to load up a tape and sit there for 30 minutes to see if it loads? Yeah. And sometimes it didn't. You yeah. can still do that over on yeah. the Bugs channel. With a, bit, with a bit of banter along the way as well. <laughs> excellent definitely go check him out and the uh I, I, i'll say it out now it's fine um the video that we're working on together the dizzy the complete history is the biggest collaboration effort i've ever done on a um on a complete history ever uh dizzy's a franchise that i grew up with big time in the 80s as a lot of the uk folk did uh, on the home computer market and um actually we got smash jt in uh from the states uh Dizzy hasn't exactly got the most respect out in uh, out in America. I've noticed with more and more people talking about him. I saw AVGN and uh, uh, gaming historian and stuff. Do you know much about Dizzy? I don't, but I am definitely interested. Yeah, it, it's it's like he 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 was huge in the UK, uh, an absolute massive massive mascot, and uh, it's time we tell our story. So that's that's the big big video that me and uh, Mister Novabug uh, are working on together. It's something that we've said we do since ages and ages ago and it was such Ooh. a massive project we put it off for so long and finally it's coming hopefully think, this excellent weekend. 18 months ago i think slopes wasn't it i think yeah, sure. yeah it was... 18 months ago we we put you proposed the idea to me and i said yeah that's a fantastic idea and we'll get cracking on that and then slopes went into the stratosphere <laughs> yeah, it's uh it, it's a movie length episode guys it's easily over an hour long already and i've got to add a little bit more to the end as well uh these guys that made this game are uh, the UK's uh, Yuzo Koshiro's and all that they, sort of stuff. They, they, love, they love talking Dizzy. They love they talking Dizzy. Wasn't it? it was, uh, I'll, I'll give this away. They, they, they were responsible. Was it for 14 or 15% of the entire video game yeah. market in the UK? They pumped out so many games. These, yeah. these two boys. <laughs> and Codemasters, so, Codemasters owe them a lot of, of their early days as well. Codemasters wouldn't be where they are today without the Oliver Twins for yeah. my money. 
So. Think think about all your your yeah. um, is it dirt rally? Did they do dirt rally and your micro machines and all that sort of yeah. stuff? Wouldn't be yeah. around if it wasn't for the Oliver Twins. So yes, check that out. That's hopefully coming this weekend. Um, it's going to be a little bit different for me. Basically, if I don't get it done in time, I'm actually not going to put a video out this weekend. Besides, I've actually got a record unboxing which I've got right next to me. The new Ikaruga vinyl actually from Data Disc right next Ooh. to me. And um, that you might see that as a little bit of a filler and it might end up going up on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, yeah, so it, it's exciting, but that's coming up. That's what me and Nova Bug are doing. Let's chat to Mr. Paul Flo G. Well, I continue to be a, uh, well, as I call it, a below average Twitch streamer, <laughs> primarily focusing on uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past randomizers. Uh, yeah. um, and actually what I just, there's a, um, for anyone familiar, there's a newer format called uh, Inverosia, which is like an inverted uh, format where you start in the dark world and have to make it to the light world. And mm. my latest thing, uh, I've actually decided to try and come up with a tracker, to be, an item tracker and map tracker for this format. Because apparently um, it's not a very common thing, so I decided to try and make one. Cool. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, Smash JT. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm not going to really promote myself here because, I mean, if you want, check me out, but whatever. I just make videos because I have a passion about talking about stuff. But for my time, I wanted to just say it is truly an honor to be on here with you, DJ. I hey. have looked up to you. I've, I've looked up to you since before Aww. I started YouTube. And Aww. to be on a uh, uh, chat with you, to, to do this Slopescast, it's it's truly a dream come true, and not not to not to pat your ego, but no no no, you keep that, patting. When you, when you <laughs> did that uh, little Easter egg shout out on the Golden Eye video, yeah. I was working out, dude. I, a tear came to my eye, like I was like, oh my god, that was that blew me away. I can't <laughs> no, thank no, you enough, no and how much all, that man. meant to me. No, that's cool. So that's thank cool. you. No, absolutely. Well, thank you very much. I'll shout you out then. Go and check out Smash JT's <laughs> channel. Um, <laughs> For, for for the controversial side of news. Uh, that man don't mind saying what he thinks and uh, his channel is full of that sort of stuff. Uh, sometimes it's in his car, uh, driving along, uh, kicking off about something or other. Other times he's bringing up the news in his typical old school Smash GT fashion. It's still definitely worth checking out. You'll definitely find something you like. Go and sub. And um, uh, Gaming Muso. I primarily attach lengths of wire to a nicely painted plank of wood. I then attack those lengths of wire with bits of plastic. I record the sounds that those lengths of wire make. Uh, they usually sound like 30-year-old video games, and then I release those sounds to the general public. Yes. yes. That's, that's basically it, yeah. And I can recommend they are damn good. Are uh, is that on your LinkedIn? I, I try. I try. I, try. Uh, I have bought... I have bought um, I think most of your EPs and albums. I'm sure. Yeah, I yeah. I'm nearly, I'm nearly nearly finished with album two. Nearly, not not too uh, far off now. A live yeah. set of uh, James on my channel as well, live at Play Margate, which was fantastic. That was good. That was good. I want to watch that. Did, have you got me at the beginning announcing him? I have. I, I, oh, well, I, I did that, actually. Little, I know I've got. Bit. I know I've got Twister and Octi in the audience. <laughs> Yeah, that was so. good. That was good. Yeah, I've got his CD. I've actually listened to. You haven't released it yet, have you, Gaming Muso? A little bit of his next track. I won't say what it is, but it's very good. Very me. Very. Thank exciting. you. I appreciate that. I'll be yeah. looking forward to it. And also, um, I don't mind saying because uh, it might be out by the time this goes out on uh, Spotify and what have you. But Gaming Muso actually uh, made some music for the Dizzy video as well. There's a little bit, there's a little 30 second bit of music uh, exclusively in the Dizzy video. Um, nice big pumping bit right in the middle. It's really, really Hopefully nice. Hopefully he doesn't copyright well. strike you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, there you go. And that was uh, Slopes Cast number three, I think it was. So or two or three, I don't know anymore. Three, Ooh, I lost think. count. Lost count at three. three. There we go. Thank you all for watching and or listening, whatever it is you've done. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all next time. Sajalena, everyone. Bye. Catch y'all. See ya. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.